And we welcome you to Kanuya K Stadium here on the campus of Kamehameha Kapalama as we get set for the 22nd annual Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl. Glad you're with us here on ScoringLive.com. Sorry for the delay a little bit. Felipe Ojasco, Mark Maneri, Avin Santiago will join us in just a little bit. West won the toss. They're wearing blue. They'll attack from right to left here on your screen. The East in red. It'll be Jaron Morikawa to start it off here for the West. And here's a handoff for Keone Paseno. And Paseno will take it to the near side to the 36-yard line. Gain of about 9 yards near the first down marker. Let's get you the West All-Stars. Led by head coach David Stan. Jerry Morikawa, quarterback. Ryan Tuya Soa listed as the running back here. Keone Paseno, DeCorey Briscoe, Ali'i Padrina, Keanu Chi, the receivers. And up on the line will be Joey Engelmeyer, Telegrace, Ian Kukahiko, Logan Santiago, and Jaron Villegas. A lot of storylines to get to as this night progresses. It's second and one here for the West with Morikawa out of the gun. Five receivers here for Morikawa. And a give on the far side to Paseno, throws downfield, this is complete. Inside East Territory. Holding by Ali'i Padrina. And Darren Agostiro out of Moanlua makes the tackle here. We'll get you the defense here for the West in just a little bit. Ben Hammond on the East 43-yard line. Paseno along with Brandon Felici out of Lelehua and Nanakuli respectively. Here's the defense here for the East All-Stars. They will line up like this. Setefano Lavatai, Javid Mohetale, Mana Chung Gum, and Chanson Exabe in the secondary. The linebackers, Matai Paselio, Isaiah Tavai, Rashan Falemalu, and then Jeremiah Teleni, Reno Sagapolu, Ezra Soli, and Shiloh Laboy. With it on the near sideline, here is Brandon Felici as he takes it to the 30-yard line. And Setefano Lavatai will force him out of bounds. And now we're seeing this West offense, this prolific West offense. Uh, likes to air it out a little bit. March down the field here, Mark. Finally, likes, uh, finally nice to join you, Felipe. Yeah. Jared Morikawa, precision passer, doing what he does best. Going across a simple uh, qu uh, little corner route at about the 30-yard line. A good completion for the West squad. West won the last meeting, 46-14. Hand off to Tuya Soa up the middle out of the Puno Buff and Blue squad. And look at Tuya Soa turn the legs. Two yards shy of the first down to the 23. It's Jacob Pitt, the 6'1", 250-pounder out of Castle. And Rashawn Falimalu, the linebacker out of Kahuku, make the stop. I'm sure uh, Ryan Tuya Soa wanted to get a little extra yards after that state championship loss. And Rashawn Falimalu making a good tackle on the outside, bringing up about a second and three. Good opening drive here for the West. Maury Cowell on the snap. Rowan near side. This is snatched out of the air. Setefano Lavatai makes a tackle. DeCorey Briscoe makes the catch. It's another West first down to the 16-yard line. And then keep in mind, Felipe, that we talked to Georges Gilbert before the game. 4-3 defense. A base 4-3 can rush inside the 10. The linebackers cannot blitz in this all-star game. Trips up top for Morikawa. First and 10. Morikawa lays it off too high, though, for Ryan Tuyasoa, incomplete. Yeah, so this 4-3 defense can't really blitz. Everything's sort of got to ease up, much like you would see in the Pro Bowl. But anything inside the 10 is legal. You can pretty much do anything, blitzes and, and all those packages. Yep, and then you can do some stunts as well up front. You can do some twists and turns and also bring in the linebackers to blitz. Uh, but inside, that's uh, within the 10-yard line. So outside here, linebackers cannot blitz. Uh, against the West squad. Second down and 10 here from the 16. Morikawa looks to throw. He does throw. And this is a completed pass all the way down to the nine yard line as Austin Gerard makes the catch. Javen Mohetal there out of Kohuku on the tackle. Gerard, the 6'170 pounder out of Kamehameha, one of 10 players here from Kamehameha on this West squad. Yeah, Gerard, 30 catches, 517 yards, four touchdowns on the year. A uh, good receiver for the Kamehameha Warriors this past season. Third and short, Tuyasoa up the middle. Being dragged from behind. Tuyasoa about a half yard shot of the first down. Is Matai Paselio out of Kahuku. 
comes in to make the stop again. And we talk about the 10 players from Kamehameha, 10 players from Farrington, also Kahuku, suited up here in tonight's game. And definitely, uh, Pasilio had a great, great uh, state championship against the Buff and Blue, recorded two sacks, big two sacks, all kinds of pressure against Tui Tui, led of the quarterback for the Buff and Blue. And Pasilio is one of those guys, just flies to the football very fast, very physical. And that, that whole defense, Felipe, for the Kahuku Raider, Red Raiders, are very, very physical. And now Wes are going to take the time out here, their first of three at the 8.59 mark here of this first quarter. It's a fourth and short inside the 10. So as we mentioned before in these modified rules, these defensive blitz packages and anything you can, anything really goes inside uh, this type of territory. Felipe Ojasco again with Mark Venari and Avon Santiago on the sidelines. We'll get to him in just a little bit. Again, Wes uh, won last year's meeting 46-14. to East lead the series 10-9. to They tied twice. There is no overtime here in the uh, Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl, but this entire week, it seems, with the regular season over and the championship season over as well, has really been about camaraderie, and that's uh, what the Hub has really been all about. They've done a great job at it. Uh, over at Farrington, just prior to these teams arriving, uh, both squads from the East and the West gathered over at uh, Farrington. They had a little dinner, uh, did some icebreakers, got to uh, hang out with each other, which is pretty good considering that, uh, you know, these may be the last time, uh, this is probably the last time that a lot of these guys are going to see each other. Yeah, they're going to, a lot of them are not going to see each other. A couple of them going to the University of Hawaii, but a lot of these, uh, these guys in the football field here tonight are going to go on and play somewhere else, uh, play college football at a different destination. Here's the handoff to Jacob Kukahiko, and Kukahiko gets stopped. Jacob hit. Again, the big defensive end out of Castle makes the stop. And just like that, good defensive stand there for the East, and they'll take over inside their own nine-yard line. Yeah, Jacob Pitt, 6'1", 250 pounds, getting up field and allowing to get Jacob Kukahiko. Good job defensively up front for himself of establishing himself, and a good job in a turnover on downs. Here comes Kahaku Iaya, the 6'2", 225-pounder out of Kailua. First team OIA East, just named recently. We'll get to the offensive starters here in just a little bit. Yep. Three in the backfield behind Iaya. How's those three running backs in the backfield? And now we're going to get a flag. It'll believe be a delay game. Imagine that, Felipe. Yeah. In the backfield, you have Alfonso Wiley, Tyler Taumua, and then Abraham Silva. Oh, boy. Arguably, arguably the three best running backs in the state of Hawaii. Obviously, you have Alfonso Wiley, the OIA East Player of the Year. Tyler Taumua going to Washington State. And then Amo Silva is your fullback. Nice combination to have. About 5,000 yards combined between those three. Here's Wiley. Up the middle. Stop. Solomon Leano from Campbell. Six foot, 215 pound linebacker. Able to shoot that gap and put some uh, good lickings on Alfonso Wiley in the backfield. Down to the one. We'll get you the starting lineup here. Listed. Uh, just prior to kickoff, Kahaku Yai, the quarterback, Tyler Talmu, and Abraham Silva, the running backs. The receivers, Keone Tom Malar, Francis Evangelia, Tyler Liana. Up on the line, John Wa'a, Charles Sadaraka, Lana Kila Barbieto, and Michael and Mitchell Boy. Second and forever from their own one. They give to the deep back, it's Wiley, and Wiley will lean forward for about three yards. It'll bring up about third and 15 now here. As the big Kennedy Tuli Masaya Lee for the West makes the stop. And what a big grab the University of Hawaii got over this last weekend with Kennedy. That's a big pickup for Norm Chow. Kennedy Tuli Masaya Lee is an absolute force defensively. We've seen him pound offensive linemen all year in six foot two, 280 pounds. And keep this in mind, Felipe. This big boy runs a 4840. So yep. when he comes up field, he's going to come at you at full speed ahead. Ka'eo Kanoa Kikai. Kawakami Kaveloa, Blazely Ili, AJ Aliaga in the secondary here for the West. Isaac Savati Naya, Wesley Nagaseyu, Solomon Leano, the linebackers. As we mentioned, Tuli Masili, Andrew Julius, Dakota Turner, and Ulesi Sale up front here for the West. Third down and long from their own four yard line. Third and 15, first down available at the 19. 7.29 here to go in a scoreless game. And off to the near side, and again, 
with less defense. Tough and physical as ever, limiting Abraham Silva to about half a yard. And now the East will have to punt it away here. Well, Alessi Saleh and Solomon Leano once again on the tackle defensively uh, for the West squad and uh, putting some pressure up front early in a scoreless ball game. But uh, when you hold down those three running backs and Alfonso Wiley, Almo Silva, Tyler Talmua, that's an accomplishment in itself. <laughs> Danny Nishioka will punt this one away. One of the great return men in the ILH and in the state, Ali Padrina, the 5'9", 175-pounder out of Kamehameha. Not to mention a great center fielder for the Kamehameha baseball team as well. Almost blocked. Down goes Nishioka. Fair catch called by Padrina. I believe it deflected off of him. And the West will have it at midfield. I mean, a very dangerous situation there. And this is what I'm taking early, Felipe, from this football game. There's a lot to prove. I mean, there's some uh, college coaches looking out and being this game streaming online on Scoring Live gives a chance for uh, some college coaches to look at these players, and they're going to go out there and give 110%. And we're definitely seeing it early. There's some hard-hitting guys being physical up front, and you got to give credit to both squads yeah. doing a good job early. Yeah, West definitely – Setting the tone, at least in these first five and a half minutes. 6.32 here to go. Scoreless. First quarter. We get Makoa Kamanse Stevens now at quarterback. Out of Kamehameha. They'll sweep it on the far side. 4%. Oh, back to Stevens. Near side. made the catch. At the 35. Look at Stevens go. At the 20. And down he... Goes at the 17 yard line. Pickup of 30. A little bit of trickery out of David Stans coming up, uh, pulling one out of the old hat. Uh, Comanche Stevens gives the handoff on a intended reverse, and then Pisano throws it back to Comanche Stevens. <laughs> and we've seen Comanche Stevens run the football. He can run, and if he if you mistake him for just being a pocket quarterback, he can definitely run the football in open space. Oh, this is the Senior Bowl. I love it. First down at the 17. Stevens again out of the gun. With time. He'll pump, and he'll get tackled right in the pocket. Down he goes at the 21-yard line. It's a loss of four. And up front, it looked like uh, it had to have been a Setefano Lavita in the tackle, doing a good job of pursuing upfield, making a good hit at the defensive end position. Along with Ezra Soli up front. Ezra Soli, another guy who had a big defensive uh, a stand against the Punahou Buff and Blue. Doing a good job up front. A big defensive tackle for the Kahuku Red Raiders. Second down and long. Second and 14. They'll sweep everybody does. Steven, so float one downfield. This is caught by Pacheco. Lost the football. It's live. Scooped up and going back the other way. Richard Parham, the free safety out of Moanalua, made the recovery. And it looked like and Justin Isova. Isova. Yeah. Justin Isova came up with the football and then popped it out of Pisano's hands. And Pisano fumbled it at about the 10, the 20 yard line. And then it came right into the defensive back's hands. And the E squad will get the football back. So it'll be first down and 10 from the 17 now. These have it from left to right. 5.17 here to go, scoreless. I'll tell you what, Reese Foy now coming in at quarterback. State champion out of Iolani with Silva, the fullback, right behind him. They'll give it up the middle and getting back to the line of scrimmage. They'll bring up second down and 10. With it is Ty Gonda out of Kaiser. Zen Ikehara. The linebacker out of Kamehameha makes a stop again. Kai Gond is a special football player out of uh, the Kaiser Cougars. Rich Miano has compared him many, numerous times to a gentleman by the name of Kealoha Pilares. Right. And uh, he's very shifty out of the backfield, has good hands. And uh, just recently, Rich Miano, the coach for the Kaiser Cougars, told me he's got an offer on the table from Weber State, as well as uh, the University of Hawaii is looking at him extensively as well. Silva the fullback here with Foy the quarterback. Play action for Foy. Wants to load up. And the state champ on the run. Has to throw it. This is caught. But stopped as Ty Gonda made the catch. Brandon Johnston, the outside linebacker out of Waianae, comes in to lay the hit. 
And Monica Kiva applying the pressure here on Foy. And time and time again, we've seen Foy do that all season long. Just ch getting chased out of the pocket, couldn't find anybody open. And when he finally found someone, uh, it was stopped immediately. I'm sure it's a little different for Reese Foy not going out of the gun. He's under center and then doing play action pass. We see Ilani run that spread formation so efficiently, so effectively uh, throughout the Eilish Division Two against Division One opponents. And Reese Foy under center. Uh, looks a little different to say the least, uh, Felipe, but doing a good job of getting out of uh, trouble and throwing it away. And a flag thrown here on third and 18. And we're going to get another delay game. This is pinned deep into East Territory. Ball at the four. First down available at the 27. Another handoff up the middle to a Fungo Wiley. OIA East Offensive Player of the Year. He'll take it to the 11-yard line. Gain of about seven or eight here. Devin Dep Horsewill will make the stop here. Now the East will have to punt it away again. And this is one thing. Uh, as we know, the Farrington Governor coaching staff and Randall Kimoto likes that pro-style double back in the backfield eye formation. And... Uh, David stands complete opposite, likes to spread formation, likes to spread things out. So contrast in two different styles of football. Nishioka to boot this one. This one high and deep for Padrina. And this one deflected off Padrina and taken out of the air. And Tyler Liana comes up with a football and give credit to him as it bounced off Padrina. And then Frank, or excuse me, it was Tyler Liana who came up with the football. And the East will have it on the 45-yard line. Wow, that's the second mishandling of a punt here for this West squad. Even though this is the last game of the year in the season, it's essentially over. Each of these teams, as much as they love each other on each side of the sidelines, boy, do they want to win this game, I'll tell you that. Well, they're not only representing the East and the West, they're representing their schools, their families out there. And they're going to want to come away with a victory. I mean, you don't want to lose yeah. a senior game. You want to go out victorious uh, if you're a football player on either side of the football team. This is something I would never see. Foy out of the gun with Wiley to his left. I love it. First down and 10 from the 45. Foy on the snap. Design run up the middle. Gain of four yards as he takes it to the 49-yard line. And the big defensive end from Lelehua, Andrew Sesipasara, comes in to make the tackle. Yeah, going for a little quarterback draw, and that's another quarterback who can run the football on Reese Foy. We've seen him time and time again outside of uh, outside of the pocket. He can run the football, Felipe, and he does a good job once again avoiding some pressure. Design run call on a quarterback draw, able to pick up four. Two and a half minutes here to go, first quarter on a running clock. We're scoreless in this opening quarter. Foy again out of the gun. Second down and a half dozen. Double wides either side for Foy. He'll sling it far side. And this is caught for Tanner Nishioka. And Nishioka will scramble out of bounds. He'll get the first down at the 39-yard line. It's a gain of 12 yards. And that's a hookup that's been for the last three years in the Iolani connection. Tanner Nishioka, Reese Foy, always Effective and efficient hitch route on the outside. Nishioka does a good job down the sideline, getting out of bounds, picking up a first down. Nishioka on the season, 866 receiving yards, 14 touchdowns. He picks up 12 there. Boy again in, out of the gun. First down in 10 from the West 39. Foy will sling it near side. Nishioka again. And Nishioka gets wrapped up on the near sideline with a, by, with, by Branson Funakoshi. Punakoshi will make the stop there as Nishioka loses about a couple. And then also on the tackle, Punaho alum, Punaho, or not alum yet, but Punaho <laughs> grad and Isaac Savainaya. What a tremendous uh, opportunity he has to go play at the Under Armour Bowl. Another guy and another gentleman that we'd like to say in Mantai Teo, uh, a future maybe Heisman. A lot of controversy going there, but um, <laughs> he will be joining uh, the elite in uh, the Under Armour game. So give credit to Isaac Savainaya. Good to see a pair of the local boys represent the 808 proud. Both we'll swing Silva to the near side. 80 seconds here to go in this first quarter. Foy slings it. This is caught. Nishioka the third time. Gets bumped out of bounds. He'll get the first down at the 27-yard line. Gain a 12 more. 
And this is uh, something about the All-Star game. When you're playing a base 4-3, this gives a chance to see the ability of our receivers and the way they run the routes. And you have time to also look at the quarterback and how they're able to make reads, how they're able to make those throws. And Reese Foy, always efficient on the money to Tanner Nishioka on the outside. Foy again will be out of the gun. Nishioka is the receiver to the top. Wiley to the left of Foy. Silva, one of the receivers to the bottom. Wiley bobbled the ball, able to hold on to it. And Wiley just keeps the legs going inside the 20 to the 19, gain of nine. You know, I always wondered, and I've wondered this before the game, Felipe, is imagine if you could get the best of the best in the Hawaii talent to stay home and play in the state of Hawaii. Imagine the talent that you could build with the foundation that's out here tonight. Unbelievable. Huh? I mean, you that's have Alfonso Wiley to your left and Reese Foy on your right. <laughs> It's one of the great things of the Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl. 53 seconds here to go on a running clock first quarter. The big tight end, Tyler Liana, flanked out the further receiver to the bottom. Floyd goes over the middle with a man open just behind Nishioka. Incomplete. Dakota Turner, the future Aztec out of Mililani, applying the pressure on Foy, but Foy couldn't hook up his tag team partner. Nishioka is running a post route, was actually open in the back of the end zone. He just missed him. Reese Foy, usually efficient, usually be able to put that on the money, put it a little bit behind him to Nishioka, who's running a nice post route in the back of the end zone. 40 seconds here to go. Third down and a couple from the 19-yard line. Foy again with Wiley to the left. Silva in the right slot. Foy just gives it off to Wiley, and Wiley will get pretty much blown up just short of the 20-yard line. I'll tell you why I'm laughing. Because Kennedy Tuima Sealii was in the backfield before Reese Foy Ugh. was even able to get that ball off. And fortunately for Reese Foy, he got the ball off because Kennedy was going to destroy him in the backfield. Kennedy has really been at least, uh, a personal favorite of mine, at least as far as watching a defensive guy. Just, just so explosive and so strong off that, off that line. And you watch it in person, it's just unbelievable. And again, we talk about you know the verbal commitment that he made at, to the University of Hawaii. And they're certainly going to get one heck of a gem in Kennedy Tuli Masili. End of the quarter here in Kapalama. And we're scoreless. 0-0. Zero, zero. We're coming back with the second quarter. And you're watching the 22nd Annual Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl right here on ScoringLive.com. Back here at Kanuyakea Stadium, the campus of Kamehameha Kapalama, 22nd Annual Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl. Felipe Ojasco, Mark Maneri, even Santiago on our sidelines. Scoreless, but a very fun and energetic first 12 minutes. We head to the second. East in the red, west in the blue. It's Foy throwing near side. Nishioka got it again. Down to the 16-yard line as he's wrapped up by Solomon Leaeno and Noah Yap, the free safety out of Kamehameha. Noah Yap, uh, the brother of Bo Yap, the defensive end who had a great year so far for the University of Hawaii. And University of Hawaii playing tomorrow night in their final game against Southern Alabama, I believe. Should be a fun one as well. As Gonda checks out at the running back spot, Tyler Talmua will come in. Talmua, of course, everyone knows his name by now. A 5'10", 202 pounder out of Farrington. To the left of Foy. Talmua bobbled the ball. It's still loose on the deck. Turner's fighting for it, along with Silva Inaya, who's got it. Trying to peel the bodies it looks off. Like the West, uh, the West squad gets a football. No, they're going to mark it second down. It seems. I wonder who came up with that. Yeah. It, it was kind of a high snap to Reese Foy, and by the time he had to get the football off to Tyler Talmua, Tyler Talmua uh, just juggled it at the line of scrimmage. The ball came loose, and it'll be a loss of two. I uh, wonder who came up with that football. Either way, I think the crowd was trying to will the referees <laughs> into uh, into exchange of that uh, of that possession, but. It'll bring up second down and about 12 here from the 17-yard line. Boy's been taking a lot of snaps out of the gun. Here's one more. Pressure off the corner. Up the middle he throws. In and out of the hands of Tanner Nishioka yet again. 
Boy, everybody was coming after Reese Floyd. Logan Hanohano, one of those guys. Many Perese as well, out of Punahou and Mililani, respectively. Yeah, Many Perese, he's he was flying under the uh, the radar the whole year, and then all of a sudden we've seen him in the second half of the football year, just making a presence on the football field. He's got offers from Boise State, Illinois State, Weber State. He's a defensive tackle that just causes all kinds of havoc uh, for quarterbacks in the backfield. Yeah. Many Perese. Good job up front for the Milani Trojans all year. They're down in 12 here. 10.33 to go, second quarter. 22nd annual Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl. Glad you're with us here on scoringlive.com. Foy is out of the gun. He'll take the snap. Pressured out of the pocket again. He's on the run. Devin Horswell couldn't get to him. Foy throws, and this is incomplete. Shoved out of bounds as... Tanner Nishioka was the intended receiver. Floyd Nishioka been trying to make that connection, but this West defense is held strong. Yeah, good coverage on the outside by Blaze Lee Lee doing a good job as well. Uh, he was covering all over Tanner Nishioka. And then Reese Floyd, we've just seen his capability to run outside the pocket, able to throw it, and it uh, looks like the East, the East squad will call a timeout. It's their second timeout here in the first 13 minutes and 37 seconds. I believe you. I don't think you're going to see any kind of field goals uh, <laughs> certainly in this one. I don't think yeah. so. I think. I mean, you got Conley. Uh, he's uh, the kicker for the Radford Rams. He's on the West squad. But I, I'm pretty sure the, the camaraderie and getting in the end zone is more important for these two teams here right. tonight. Again, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, you know, the, Wayne Chun and the great staff over at the uh, – Hawaii Union Builders have put on this great event for the last 22 years. The East lead the series 10 to 9. They tied twice in this series as well. There is no overtime uh, in the Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl. But what the Hub has done for high school athletes from top to bottom, they've given nearly a quarter or three quarters of a million dollars in scholarships to players, and that really goes a long way. And it's good to see like uh, companies like the Hub. Um, assisting in that financial need for a lot of parents. Yeah, out and, there. and people have mistaken that the, the scholarship money is given to football football players, and it goes to all kinds of athletes and all people, uh, student athletes around the state of Hawaii. It gives them an opportunity to excel at the next level into college, and it's a great thing that the hub is doing for this uh, for the young athletes of the state of Hawaii. It's an opportunity for them to grow as an individual to get to college. Fourth down and twelve. Wiley is in the left slot. Foy at the quarterback. Foy will take the snap. Float one up top. Nobody in the area. Nishioka, I believe, misran the route along with Liana. And Kennedy Tuli Masayali applies the pressure yet again. And a turnover on downs. And the West come back on the field. And keep in mind, Felipe, Kennedy Tuli Masayali is going against the best offensive lineman in the state of Hawaii. You got John Vaal, who's going to be his teammate at the University of Hawaii. Charles Sadaraka, you got a lot of guys up front that are over 300 pounds, and what he's doing, you'd like to see that at the University of Hawaii in the next level as he goes on to play college ball. Without a doubt there, Mark. Darren Morikawa back in at quarterback. Jacob Kukahiko, the 5'11", 210-pounder out of Kapolei, the running back behind him. Morikawa, time, throws it right behind Paseno, but it goes off the hands and incomplete as Nicholas Kwan and Zarin Augustiro deflected. It was intended for Ali'i Padrina, second down and ten. Yeah, good coverage by Nicholas Kwan, able to come up and uh, deflect that football away from Ali'i Padrina. Padrina looking to run a hitch route on the outside. Morikawa loves that route as he's always uh, on the dime, precise. Morikawa, calm, cool, floats one up for Paseno. This one deflected incomplete. Nicholas Kwan again on a pack five. Wolfpack represent third down. If he doesn't go up for that ball in time, and he doesn't time that jump perfectly, Paseno's gone. That's to the house. Credit Kwan doing a good job of timing that, going for the highest point, deflecting that football, and making sure Morikawa doesn't complete that pass on the outside. Good play by the uh, Wolfpack, uh, the ILH Division II Pack 5 Wolfpack. Third down and 10 here from the 17-yard line. Morikawa again out of the gun. 10.05 here to go. Second quarter. We'll send to Corey Briscoe now into the left slot. We'll see him in motion. 
Again, it's Kukahiko right behind Morikawa. Delay give. This is to the near side. Look at Jacob trying to shift his way and just stick the head down. And he'll get about nine and a half yards, flirting with the first down marker. Nicholas Kwan again on the tackle. And depending on the spot, we'll see the first down. Fans trying to will this first down. And they'll go. give it to him. Jacob Kukahiko, what an exceptional runner out of Coppola. He's been the go-to guy all year for uh, Darren Hernandez's staff. 719 yards on the ground this year for the Coppola Hurricanes. Does a great job running the football. First down and 10 from the 28. A float to the near side for Gerard. And Gerard has it in. The 6 170 pounder out of Kamehameha makes the stop. And Nicholas Kwan there on coverage. Yeah, good job by Gerard to go up and over oh. Nicholas Kwan on the outside. Morikawa just laid it up there for grabs for Gerard. Gerard making an extended grab on the outside at the 40-yard line for the West squad. Great catch by Austin Gerard, the Kamehameha Warrior uh, graduate from uh, from Kapal Lama. Imua. Morikawa throws far side. This is complete Keanu Chi. Chi trying to break away and then gets eaten alive. Have mercy, Matai Pacelio, one of the guys in there. Jeremiah Teleni, I believe, laid the <laughs> smack down, it seemed, there on Keanu Chi. But good to see Chi pop right back up. Yeah, Chi, good catch on the outside. He's been kind of that inside receiver for the put a whole buff in blue. But Matai Pacelio came over and said, do you remember me from a week ago? <laughs> what a hit. Morikawa on second down, hands it for Kukahiko. And Kukahiko again getting wrapped up. Around his waist is Jacob Pitt. Jacob, the big defensive end out of Castle all over the place. No gain there. Third down. Jacob Pitt has had a good night so far for the E squad. He's doing a good job of getting up front, pursuing the football. Remember, 4-3 defense. Keep in mind, no blitzes. Base 4-3 package. You can only blitz within the 10-yard line. So you're going to see a lot of zone coverage, man-to-man. -man. Uh, 4 3 defense once again. 8.20 to go in a running clock. Third down and about eight. On the snap, Morikawa lays it off. This one out of the hands of Paul Andrew Rodin. And that was a live ball. And it's taken down near midfield at the West 49 yard line. Big loss here. Loss of 11. Yeah, Morikawa threw the ball behind Kukahiko. Kukahiko kind of juggled it. Then the ball came loose. Yes, you said it, Felipe. Live football. Even though it isn't behind the line of scrimmage, if the ball goes in front of the running back, remember it's an incomplete pass, but any time the ball is behind the running back at the line of scrimmage, it is indeed a fumble. Now it's fourth down, and why not go for it, huh? Why not? Both squads playing great defense. Great Ro football game in general. Roden right behind. Morikawa trips up top, and looks like we're going to get a timeout here, courtesy of the West. 7.29 here to go in this second quarter. We'll step aside back with the 22nd Annual Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl right here on scoringlive.com. Fourth down and long here for the West. Now they'll punt it away. And here's a rugby-style punt by Isaac Savainaya. And this one bounces on the far side. And with it is Nicholas Kwan. Kwan trying to take it up the middle. And he'll get stopped short right at the 17-yard line. The East will come back onto the field. 7-17 here to go in the second quarter. Felipe Ojasco, Mark Vaneri, 22nd annual Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl. And what a Senior Bowl has been so far, despite it being a scoreless game. I think it's a display of athleticism on both sides of this football field. We're seeing great athletes across the, uh, the state of Hawaii. And, and what a job uh, both of these coaches have. Only a week to prepare. But these guys are coming out here full steam, 100%. That's all you can ask for here in the Hub uh, Goodwill game. Tahaku Iaya now will come back in. Number two at the quarterback spot. He'll be under center. Out of Kailu, as we mentioned, first team OIA East. And a handoff up the middle. And this is Tyler Talmua. As Talmua takes it to around the 21-yard line. I believe Tyler Talmua is still going to the University of the, or excuse me, Washington State University in the Big Pac-12 Conference, having a big W for uh, the Washington State Cougars 
against the Huskies in the Apple Cup. A big victory for the Washington State Cougars. Kind of a, a program that's been up and coming, and I think Tyler Talmud will fit well into that West Coast style of offense and the way he likes to run the football for the Farrington Governors. And now it'll be a fungal Wiley, the deep back here in this formation. They give to Wiley across left guard, and he gets stopped short <laughs> by a plethora of guys. Isaac Silva, Inaya, Kennedy, Tuli, Masayali'i. A loss of about one. I'll make it. No, the referee's marching it back. Wow. We're going to about three yards back. Third down and nine now. Kennedy, Tuli, Masayali'i is playing phenomenal so far. He's an absolute beast up front. We said it fully. I mean, we both enjoy watching him play, and he's been a privilege to play. But this this gentleman is going to do all kinds of things for the University of Hawaii. He's going to be a great asset for Norm Chow and his defense. Now if Kui Williams listed as a tight end, he'll be one of the guys deep back there as Iaya throws it far side, almost intercepted. Almost our first interception of the game as it goes off the hands of Amu Poi. And Francis Evangelia was the intended receiver there. And it'll bring up fourth down. And it looks like the East will punt it away yet again. Yeah, Amu Poi is a standout defensive player for the Radford Rams. He plays that kind of that rover position. He can play linebacker. He can play that safety position. And he's been a force for the Rams in the, the white division as Radford came down this past year uh, to the OIA white division. Had a good run at it and, uh, you know, played against some tough teams. Kaiser, Nana Cooley, the Cinderella story team of the year and just came short against the Iolani Red Raiders. And Nishioka will punt this one away. Briscoe back for the West. Briscoe does have a return for touchdown. This one, I believe, went through his hands. He scoops it up and he marches the wrong way as he's taken out by, guess who? Nicholas Kwan yet again. I'll tell you what, Nicholas Kwan is playing bigger than that 5'9", 170 pounds. He's doing a good job <laughs> of covering the football field at his defensive back, special teams. And how's uh, another thing i got to point out, Tanner Nishioka has an absolute leg. Right. He can boot the football. My goodness. Nishioka, one of the studs here for representing Iolani. Saw about four catches here in tonight's game. It's first down and 10 from the 25-yard line of the West. West in blue, east in red. 5.34 here to go, second quarter. Be Makoa Kamanse Stevens now out of the gun. Over the top. And this is a jump ball, and it is hauled in. What a catch, Ali Padrina. To the 35-yard line. Pick up a 40. Sete Fonovavitai was absolutely draped all over Ali'i Padrina. You couldn't even tell who came up with the football. And at the end of that, Padrina, Lavitai went up for the ball at the same time. And Padrina making an outstanding catch at the 35-yard line of the East squad. What a catch. Kamehameha Warrior hookup. Baseno, Briscoe, Padrina, the three receivers to the bottom. With Stevens on the snap, handoff up the oh. middle, and taking a shot there was Don Cayo on a castle. And he tried to give it to Kyle Sato. Oh, oh, oh. I tell you what, if you don't think these players are playing hard, we just got the idea that Kyle Kyle just or Don Kyle just came and blew up that play. Great tackle. Sato again, the single setback, second down, and about nine. Stevens with Tuli Masayali will make it Ezra Sully trying to chase him. Stevens will get on his feet and scramble for the first down to the 24. Josiah Situmiang doing a good job of making the tackle. But once again, Sid, come on, say Stevens. Makoa, come on, say Stevens. Uh, establishing himself as the Kamehameha Warrior quarterback. Uh, both of the Stevenses were uh, battling out throughout the year, and then Coach David Sands thought McColl had the upper hand, and he showed it here tonight. Great scrambling ability outside the pocket, and then picking up a first down. Good job by the Warrior. From the 24-yard line, Stevens throws the fade, and this is incomplete. Looking for Dustin Munar, 5'850 pounder out of Damien. And Lemon Chung Gum able to have him on the coverage there. 
And then also, you know, I, I've been watching a lot of college football following, you know, this year has been extra special. And Kirk Curbstreet, I mean, we know who Kirk Curbstreet is, right? right? Uh, that back shoulder fade, one of the hardest throws to make, and Kamonse Stevens just put it on a dime there. Just a little off, but back shoulder fade, one of the hardest throws for a quarterback to make, no matter what level you're playing. And off Sato across left guard, and he gets tripped up at around the 25-yard line by Josiah Sitemiang. Again, the linebacker out of Iolani as we get the four-minute mark here on a running clock in this second quarter. Heading in, would you ever believe that we would be in a scoreless second quarter about, about 20 minutes in? Especially when you got a lot of offensive firepower, but then you also have a lot of defensive firepower on both sides of this football field, and it's been a scoreless battle here tonight. So we have Sola now, the single setback, third and 11. Stevens, the screen, Padrina the catch. Padrina made a couple men miss, and he'll get to the sideline at around the 25-yard line. Javen Mohetao on the tackle, that safety from the Kohuku Red Raiders. Uh, always doing a good job defensively. He had his hands full against Conovino in the state championship game. Held them to only five catches for 62 yards. Did a good job from the defensive back position. And uh, we're going to see a field goal, get some points on the board. The West squad will be going for a, a field goal. I believe that's Conley, yep, the that, kicker. Out of Radford, the 6 180-pounder. This one from 43 yards. This is up. Conley pushed it left, and it stayed left. No good. He had the leg. He had the distance. I mean, that was booted pretty, pretty powerful by Conley. He just pushed it left, and uh, the West squad will come up empty. 2.54 here to go, and we're still scoreless here. No ties. <laughs> Last year, 60 combined points between these two. And now the East will come back onto the field. 43-yard field goal, no good by Conley from the West squad. And last year, the West squad player of the game in uh, Keaton Sadonaga, who had 375 yards passing. Uh, for the West squad last year. The all-time greats, the state championship era, certainly for Lelehua, Foyan at the quarterback spot. Here's a give up the middle to Abraham Silva. Silva would take it for about a yard and a half. As Andrew Julius, a 6'1", 290-pounder out of Kapole. Every Oahu school here is represented by at least one senior, except for St. Louis, uh, due to uh, you know schedule conflicts and uh, a mandatory uh, um, uh, school function. School function. So unfortunately, it's uh, we can't see guys like Jeremy Tabuyo in there, the future Texas A&M Aggie. But certainly, best of luck to all the uh, all the Saints out there. Colton Goes as well, the linebacker, going to Tennessee. Kamale Correa as well. Foy out of the gun. Silva will pass for Tech. Foy will throw. This is caught Nishioka, racing past the 30. He gets bumped out of bounds. As a couple guys bumped in there, Hikai Kawakami Kaviloa and Blaze Lee Lee, each of them out of Kamehameha, with an Imua tackle. I'm sure they're familiar with that outstanding football game between Iolani and Kamehameha right on this football field. I believe uh, Iolani lost that game 42 to 35, and uh, that was a battle here at uh, this football field. And I, I'm sure there's a, a little bit of a revenge factor for Nishioka <laughs> as well as Foy hooking up once again. On the outside. Ball taken to the 35-yard line. First and 10. A buck 56 here to go. Second quarter. Foy out of the gun with trips to the bottom. Foy who's got Silva to his left. Foy time. A pump and a throw for Nishioka. Incomplete. Just out of his reach as Blaze Lee Lee was there step for step. And Turner... Out of Mililani, Dakota Turner applying heavy pressure on Reese Foy. It's going to be interesting what the Aztecs are going to do with Dakota Turner because obviously he plays that defense and he's uh, big enough also and, and quick enough to play that linebacker position. But we know from calling in all the games this past year, he has tremendous hands. Yeah. Soft hands can catch the football. In that game against Kapolei, how about your first three catches of the season be touchdowns? <laughs> He plays that slot, not a tight end. Yeah. A slot at 6'3", 245. 151 here to go. Foy with time on second down and 10. He'll pump. Now he'll throw. Too tall. Incomplete. 
Looking for Kainoa Koki that time. 5'11", 180 pounder out of Roosevelt. Andrew says it was sorry there on the coverage. A lot of good football players on this field. I mean, you look, Isaac Savayanaya, Kennedy Tuimasei, I'm looking forward. Even Nikolai Bolinow, he's he's one of the safeties uh, for the Buff and Blue, who is a, a tremendous force. He, we've seen him lay some hat this whole year at that safety position. The other safety there, the free safety, is Brandon Rojo out of Waianae. Rojo will come into that second level a little bit now. Remember, it's a 4-3 defense here. Up until you get to the 10-yard line. Foy on a low snap. Third down. Chased out. Look out. Foy unloading. Incomplete. Oh, beg your pardon. It's intercepted. Tom Foy. The free safety. Try to cut back in. Went back out and got the interception. He was looking for Keone Tom Millar. All kinds of pressure on a reach Foy. Millar. Wasn't even near the area, and Amu Boy goes up for the highest point, makes a great interception with a minute and 36 seconds here. Uh, the West squad will get the football back in a scoreless game. First interception here in the 2012 Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl. So here comes the West. Can they break the scoring seal here? Jaron Morikawa out of the gun. Tuiasoa will fake the handoff to him, and they'll throw it far side. This is complete. Is it hauled in? Incomplete. Uh, incomplete for Paceno. Bring up second down and 10 now from the 38-yard line. Tony Paceno has had an outstanding year for the Lelehua Mules. He's had 74 catches, 832 yards, and six touchdowns. He's been a standout receiver. He plays bigger. In that 5 760 pound frame for the Mules. First team OIA West squad as well. 89 seconds to go. Second down. Morikawa pressured, chased out by Ezra Soli. And Morikawa gets bumped out of bounds on the sideline by Omar Silva out of Kalaheo. But not before Morikawa gets to the 41 gain of about three yards. I'm sure Omar Silva was licking his chops on the outside when Morikawa is scrambling out. He tried to get there as soon as he could to get out of bounds, but uh, credit Omar to make a good hit on Morikawa on the outside. Third down and about seven now. Morikawa again out of the gun with Tuya Soa behind him. From the 41, Morikawa up the middle pressure. That one's eluded. The throw is incomplete for Ryan Tuya Soa who had it in his hands. Yeah, CML Mapu putting all kinds of pressure. The Kahuku defense a tackle, 5'10", 280 pounds. But Ryan Tuiasoa, he's been a sure-handed back for the Buff and Blue. He's had over 400 yards receiving uh, for the Buff and Blue this year. He's done a great job out of the backfield and filling in for Steven Lakalaka this past year. And uh, you know, Tuiasoa, I'm sure he wants that back because that ball could have been caught and uh, he could have gotten a lot of yards out of that one. Came in kindly. We'll, bu we'll punt this one away here for the West. Nicholas Kwan, back five Wolfpack, back deep to return this one as Conley kicks it away, bounces at the 20, inside the 10. Look at this boot by Conley, down at the one. Wow. That was a great punt. I mean, Isaac Savainaya has done the punting duty so far. And then Conley comes in and boots one all the way to the one-yard line. Friendly roll for the West squad. Uh, but the West will play defense here in the East squad. Pinned back all the way at the one-yard line. 101 here to go in this second quarter. And we are scoreless. Our only attempt at points here was a 43-yard field goal attempt by Cayman Conley out of Radford. Pushed it wide left. And now deep into their own territory, the East will try and get some momentum building here. Before the half's over, Kahaku Iaya, handoff for Wiley. Wiley just trying to get some breathing room. That's going to be very close to the goal line here. And we'll see what the referees say. And they rule it a safety. Dakota Turner, one of the big guys in there. And Wiley couldn't get out of the end zone. And Solomon Leano went over the top to make that tackle as well. And that's going to be a safety. But the, actually, the officials 
are uh, looking at this. Um, it may come back. They're trying to decipher what's going on here. And now here's Vern Nakamoto discussing the uh, discussing the call here. Vern Nakamoto, very veteran official here. And we'll see the official word here from Vern. Did the ball get over and out of that Why is end zone? It? And the flag's being thrown here. It's going to be a false start. A legal procedure against the defense. Wow. That uh, that could be big here. I have... This is a first for me. Yeah. An illegal procedure what? against the defense. We have 50 seconds remaining here in this second quarter. So, that's the call. It would give the East, you know, a little bit more life here. I'll bring up first down and about five. So erase the two points off the board, and we're still scoreless. I didn't quite the, see what it was, though. I just got the call from uh, Mr. Tanavasa to my left is that they blitzed. Uh, they can't blitz. They only can blitz inside the 10 on their opposite uh, goal line if uh, the opponent is going to go into a score. So you cannot blitz. That's what the penalty was, and uh, that will move the ball out of a five-yard penalty. And another timeout here called by the West squad. It was their third and final timeouts. We have the 52nd mark here of this second quarter. We got to send a special shout out to our friends over at Hawaii Self Storage. Thank you so much for all your support. All of Hawaii High School Athletics. And of course, uh, this game also in association with OC16. Special thanks to our uh, Oceanic friends over there as well. And of course, the Hawaii Union Builders. And. Uh, they have done a great job for so long, these past 22 years, giving nearly three quarters of a million dollars for not just football players, but high school athletes ev everywhere for them to uh, get their education at a quality college and to help with that uh, financial assistance. There. Yeah, definitely. And then also a big, big shout out to the whole crew of ScoringLive.com. I mean, yeah. this is a, an effort that was uh, put together since uh, 4.30, uh, getting this all together. And, it, and it's, I would say, Brian, that it's come out pretty well. We appreciate, you know, what you're doing here tonight for uh, these fine young athletes. And uh, they'll appreciate it as their families are watching it. And uh, tremendous job here tonight as well. 50 seconds here to go. See if the East can uh, at least try and get the field goal range and at least try and put Tanner Nishioka inside his range and try and break the scoring seal here. Imagine if you had Jeremy Tabuyo on the outside and just throwing <laughs> it up with 4-4 speed. <laughs> I mean, no offense to the other players out here. They're all quality athletes, great athletes. I mean, with a guy like that and separation of speed, I mean, wouldn't it be nice to throw it out there to him? This is like a local version of Madden football. <laughs> have all these great players on the field. Give up the middle. Look at this. Abraham Silva at the 20 and all the way home. Touchdown. I've been waiting, Felipe. Abraham Silva, 80 yards, breaks it open on a halfback draw. The 30, the 20, the 10 to the house. 37 seconds here to go, and we got our first score of the game. On a Silva burst up the middle. How's that speed for 225 pounds? My goodness. That woke up the crowd. <laughs> Man. East lead. Six zip. It appears that the East, for the time being, would... He's going to try and attempt to go for two, and that's how they'll line up with Kainalu Kaleo, one of the guys up front here, along with Kui Williams. Wiley's a tailback. They give it to him. Wiley trying to break free. The ball popped out. That would have been a live ball and returnable here in, by these rules. But it's on the ground. Two-point conversion failed, and it is Abraham Silva. Who else? to get us our first score of the game, 6-zip. And what can you say about Abraham Silva? My goodness. 
236 carries, 1,665 yards, 18 touchdowns. And we've been kind of used to this. I think we're spoiled here <laughs> to watch these three backs in Tyler Talmoor, Al Fungo Wiley, and Amo Silva. I mean, my goodness, that burst of speed for 225 pounds. No college commit as of yet. If you're a college coach watching this, he is a player out there to grab. He's a tremendous speed, tremendous power, great hands out of the backfield as well. It'll be Isaiah Telvai to boot this one away. Pisano and Briscoe here for the West getting back deep to return this. Telvai punch this one, picked up by Pisano at the 19. Paseno gets tripped up by Kuje Tapusoa, the 5'10 defensive back out of Kuhuku, made his verbal commitment to go play at Brigham Young University. We'll get a chance to watch him play against the University of Hawaii Warriors. Kuje Tapusoa, I love that name. That's one of the best names here that we that get make, to call Kuje. That, that makes the all-team selection, definitely. All-name selection, I should say. And Tui Masali. That's another one. <laughs> That's another one. His presence alone, I'll tell you that. I'm Stevens <laughs> will come in out of the gun now. Jacob Kukahiko. Again, the running back out of Kapule. Right behind him. Stevens on the snap in the pocket with a marker down. Throws complete for Padrina. And the little down the sideline. Pisco. With a marker down, we have a touchdown for the West. We got to check the flag. It looks like... It's coming back. I'll tell you what, though, Felipe. The hook and ladder to DeCorey Briscoe down the sideline. And you can see Briscoe's speed. It's going to be an illegal procedure penalty on the blitz. Briscoe, hook and ladder. We've seen this in the state championship game. 80 yards to the house. DeCorey Briscoe. Yet again. And just like that, we have a tie ball game. With 18 seconds here to go. 80 yards. After 23 minutes and 33 seconds of no points, we have two touchdowns in 19 seconds. And it is Cayman Conley getting ready to try and tack on the extra point for the lead. Padrina to hold. Got it down. Got it up. Got it through. West lead 7 6. This crowd came absolutely unglued after that lateral. I mean, we saw it in the state championship game. Will Cravens from Los Levi to Kavihana Johnson. I mean, that was a tremendous call. And then uh, David Stans taking a playbook out of there. And then to Corey Briscoe, 80 yards later with that speed, <laughs> to the house. Man, 18 ticks to go. I'll tell you, I got so excited I bit my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> what a fun first half this has been. Boy, we almost hope, we, we like to see the offensive touchdowns and the trickeration. It would be nice to see more of that in the second half. But nonetheless, great football game. Uh, guys playing hard out there, and uh, that's all you can ask for. Just a great, great atmosphere here at Kamehameha. A great move by Padrina to make the lateral to find Briscoe. You almost got to wonder if that was designed yeah. or if he just saw Briscoe out of the corner of his eye to just make a play and go to the house. But uh, credit Padrina to make a good pitch on the outside because if he doesn't make that pitch, Briscoe, that's, that's going to be a live ball, and Briscoe, you know, able to come up with it and scamper in for a touchdown. And with Briscoe coming from Pearl City. Uh, and that former coach Kai Kamaka at the time when Pearl City went to the OIA White Championship to take on Waipahu. Briscoe was very familiar with those hook and laterals. Able to show it off there. Conley to boot this one up. This one returnable from the one. On the far side, it's Wiley on the return. And Wiley will take it short of the 20-yard line to around the 18 with 11 seconds here to go. Well, the E-Squad still has two timeouts. Maybe they can get about two plays to maybe take a shot deep at the end zone. But uh, great fireworks in the last two minutes of this uh, first half by both squads. Now the ball's in the court of Randall Okimoto. 
Longtime head coach over at Farrington. Had his first undefeated regular season last year as a head coach for the Governors. And it will be Reese Foy out of the gun with Talmud to his right. They'll give it to Talmud. They'll try and use his legs. Talmud trying to bounce to the outside. Had his legs wrapped up by Brandon Johnston, the outside linebacker out of Wyanai. And that will be the final play of this first half. And what a first half. Nearly 24 minutes of no points. We get two touchdowns in about 19 seconds. And the West have a 7-6 lead. Yeah, we get fireworks at the end of that. We get to see Amo Silva pound one in, 80 yards, rushing touchdown. Then we get that hook and lateral from uh, Lee Padrina to the Corey Briscoe. A great uh, ending to a good first half. We'll step aside. We're coming back with more. Stick around. You're listening to the 22nd Annual Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl right here on ScoringLive.com. There we go. What a first half here <laughs> as we welcome you back to Kanuya Kea Stadium here on the campus of Kamehameha Kapalama. 22nd Annual Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl. Felipe Ojasco, Mark Veneri, even Santiago on the sidelines and nearly... 24 minutes, really, of football without a score. We finally get two touchdowns in a span of 19 seconds, and the West lead at 7-6. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of good defensive players here tonight. You got Kennedy Tui-Misele making an outstanding play. We, we touched upon it. He almost got into Reese for his face right out of the gate. I mean, Isaac Savainaya playing good defense, but great uh, great offense at the end of that uh, second quarter. I mean, you had Amo Silva. We've seen the powerful running that he's capable of. And then all of a sudden, Ali Padrina uh, catches a football. I, I don't know if it's an intended pass or an intended hook and ladder. The Corey Briscoe, about two seconds later, is in the house for a touchdown. And special thanks to, again, Wayne Chun and the gang at Hawaii Union's Builder for, uh, for allowing us to cover this game here on ScoringLive.com. We take a look at the first half stats here from uh, each of these two squads. The West have pretty much dominated uh, the first half stats, 262 yards to 45 yards, 231 out of those 262 through the air and uh, a total combined quarterback statistics 10 of 17 here for the West 6 of 14 for the East and we've seen a little bit of a of a deck shuffling if you will the quarterback spot we've seen Morikawa we've seen McCoy Stevens we've seen Reese Foy we've seen a whole lot of guys and they've filled in admirably I've seen what out of the quarterback position Jared Morikawa what he's been able to do is uh, just so precise able to throw the football but what has impressed me tonight is uh, McCoy Comante Stevens his capability of getting outside the pocket and running the football. I mean, he has tremendous speed and has shown that throughout the football year. And then the other side of the football, Reese Foy, Tanner Nishioka doing a good job. And then Kahaku Iaia is just handling the football. But it's, I mean, it's just incredible. You get to hand the football off to Alfunga Wiley, uh, Tyler Talmour, and then Amo Silva. I mean, guys that, you know, are going to go play at the next level. It really has been a defensive battle here from each of these two squads. And all the stars and all the big names that you've heard throughout this entire season certainly have come out tonight. Like Kennedy Tuli Masili. Oh, Kennedy, I mean, what a pickup for Norm Chow. I mean, and that is a huge, huge pickup because uh, he had some offers from Cal, uh, Arizona, UCLA, big Pac 12 schools. He decided to stay home, three star recruit, and he's tremendous defensively up front. Keep in mind, this six foot two, 280 pound defense alignment from on a 4 7 40, and I think Norm Chow is going to be very pleased to see what he has in the football field in Kennedy Tui Masili. 22nd edition of the Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl. East lead the series 10 to 9. They tied twice in this series. The West lead by one at the half, looking up to tie it and make it 10 10. We'll step aside, back with more here from Kanuya Kea Stadium here on the campus of Kamehameha Kapalama. Back with more. This is the Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl on ScoringLive.com. Scoring Live's second ever live video web stream for you here and what a game we have the 22nd annual hub goodwill senior bowl felipe ojasco mark veneri even santiago on the sidelines again mark uh this is a very special game uh especially for the 100 players onto the field 50 from the east and 50 from the west this is sort of their last hurrah and their final game here in uniform and uh, what a way to go out i mean both of these teams have uh, been playing exceptional a lot of good football players a lot of these guys we're going to see at the next level playing Division One football and going on to move on to their careers. And a lot of guys are going to play at the next level, whether it's Division One, AA, 
Division Two, II, Division Three, no matter what they are, they're still student athletes of the game, and they're going to go on to represent not only the schools that they represent, their families, and the prideful 808 state. And for the athletes that uh, that aspire to uh, continue their education uh, in college, uh, the hub has really done a great job, as we mentioned throughout this broadcast, of helping with the financial aspect of it. Over these last 22 years, they've given about three quarters of a million dollars uh, in scholarship money, not just to football players, but to a lot of high school athletes, and it really means a lot to, to them and their parents. And again, we can't thank uh, uh, Wayne Chun enough for uh, all his uh, continued effort and the entire uh, Hub organization, uh, their continued effort for putting this great it's event a on. It's a tremendous effort. I mean, to give the opportunity to these kids out there, a lot of these kids, you know, come from the, the middle class, you know, income families that, you know, day by day, they struggle out there to make ends meet. And, and they want their opportunity for their children to be successful out there. And the hub has done a good job of creating this opportunity uh, for the kids. And the kids out there have been uh, seizing the moment, seizing the opportunity. And uh, it's a tremendous job of the hub uh, organization to be able to do that. And this entire week for all 100 uh, players here from both of these sides have uh, has really been about camaraderie. As just prior to arriving here at Kapalama, all these players gathered over at Farrington, and uh, they enjoyed a nice little meal. They did some icebreakers. They did some bonding together. I'm sure a lot of them exchanged uh, helmet stickers and whatnot, and I'm sure contacts with each other. And uh, it's, uh, it's it's a really great thing. That's really what this uh, Goodwill Senior Bowl has been all about over these last two decades. Yeah, the camaraderie is uh, exceptional uh, that they get these kids together and enjoy one another as athletes. And uh, across the state of Hawaii, you know, you have a lot of good athletes. And to have them gather here at this football game and uh, have them to meet one another after a tremendous battle throughout the year uh, gives them an opportunity uh, to grow as individuals, communication skills as athletes. And a lot of these guys are going to be teammates someday. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're going to continue on and play football with one another, you know, whether it's at the University of Hawaii, you know, or across uh, the continental United States. Uh, these guys are going to be teammates out there one day. If you're a high school football fan, this is a sort of a dream matchup, I guess. You know, you some of the best players from the East and some of the best players from the West. Again, as we mentioned, uh, every Oahu school is represented with at least one senior, except for St. Louis because of a mandatory school function which these students uh, uh, have to participate in. And, you know, you talk about building friendships. Uh, I had a chance to play in the, the, the baseball all-star game, the Sugar Mill Classic. And a lot of the friends that, that I made, I went to play college ball with them. And then I also had an opportunity to grow friendships that I'm still friends with today. So these guys are going to be friends for a long time to come after their football careers. East to return it here to start us off in the third. This one caught by Tyler Talmua near the goal line. Talmua cut it back to the middle and got tripped up by Ka'eo Kanoa out of Kapole. And the east side will have it at the 21 yard line. Getting some questions about uh, about uh, big Scott Pagano, of course, future Clemson Tiger. He'll be participating in the uh, in the uh, U.S. Army game. So, six foot four. Another <laughs> another guy out of Moanalua. So best of luck to him in his endeavors. Isaac Savati Nile will be in the Under Armour Bowl. He's here tonight. Good to see him. He's had a couple tackles and a couple stops in there. So we'll see what the East can do here in their opening drive of this second half. Reese Foy, out of the gun, out of the gun. From Iolani, he'll throw it on the far side. It's Tanner Nishioka, and Nishioka gets taken from behind by Kikai Kawakami Kalveloa. Out of Kamehameha, again, one of ten Kamehameha players on this West squad. And this is taken out of bounds at around the 29-yard line, bring up second down and two. And that's been Reese Foy's connection all night to Tanner Nishioka on the outside. Nishioka running a, just a two-step hitch on the outside and allowing Foy to throw it, completing the pass, allowing to get upfield, using his speed, picking up eight yards. Second down now. Foy swings it near side, complete Tyler Talmua. Talmua gets taken down by A.J. Aleaga out of Iaea. Along with Isaac Sava Inaya. So four makes the, so catch, four makes the catch, four and 44, four and 44 make, the make the tackle, and it's third down. And uh, Tyler Talmua, Isaac Sava Inaya, very familiar with one another. And being a Punahou alum, uh, what Punahou does every year in the preseason, Farrington 
and Punahou play in an exhibition game. They feed one another and they uh, enjoy a camaraderie as it used to be an old rivalry back in the 70s. And they continue on the tradition. They, they have food with one another. And uh, Taomua and Savai and I have seen each other for the last three years. So uh, a lot of friendship there as well. Good to see from each of those two guys. Here's a fungal Wiley across the left side. Wiley, second effort, leans forward and gets the first down. Third and two, he got three, and the sticks will move as the ball moves to the 32-yard line. As Isaac Zavali and I trying to make that final push up there, couldn't do it. Wiley just slipped right past him. I mean, tremendous. Alfonso Wiley, keep in mind, Felipe, the second now all-time leading rusher in the state of Hawaii past Kama Bailey, uh, Mark Atuai. He's only behind Joe Egber, uh, second. I, I believe he's about 300 yards shy of that record. And uh, Alfonso Wiley is going to go down arguably one of the best backs in the state of Hawaii. First down at the 32-yard line. 10.35 here to go and a running clock. Foy loads up on a wheel route for Talmua. Like Talmua got tangled up. Amu Poi, who was uh, making coverage on Talmua, and he got tripped up, and then uh, Reese Foy overthrew Talmua, who was, like you said, Felipe, on the wheel route, was wide open about the 50-yard line. You talk about Alfonso Wiley earlier. This is kind of interesting because, uh, you know, about less than a year ago, this guy had a torn ligament uh, at the beginning of the year, played in, play, paid, played in pain <laughs> last season. He had surgery just before the season, or in the beginning of the year, and they found a bone chip in, had to take that out. Coach Reggie Torres said, Alfonso Wiley has done a good job of building his body back up into tip-top shape. Play action for four. Chased out. Andrew Sesipasara on the run. He got past him. And Foy sliding out of bounds. All the way to the 44, 12 first down yards. Intangible. And I, I want to point this out. Francis Evangelia on the outside. He's your receiver. He's coming back to the football. Sees Reese Foy pass the line of scrimmage. Immediately turns around. Makes a good block upfield. Allows Reese Foy to pick up the first down. That is intangible. You cannot teach that at a wide receiver position you have to know that good job by Francis Evangeli on the outside picking up a good block Reese Foy first down we'll mark the ball at the 45 officially again at 13 first down in 10 now 10 20 here to go in this third quarter I formation behind Foy who was under center and they'll toss it back trying to break free and trying to get to the line of scrimmage here Kai Gonda we haven't seen too much of him on the Kaiser Cougar, Andrew Sessipasar, the big defensive end, comes in to make the stop. You know, also talk about Rich Miano and the tremendous job he did it in uh, building back that Kaiser program. And, you know, Kai Gonda was in that football game against Nana Cooley, and they had a 21-0 lead. And then Kai Gonda goes down, and it shows how much they missed him as uh, Nana, Cooley, uh, Nana Cooley was able to come back and uh, beat the Kaiser Cougars, essentially ending their season. And don't forget, Kaiser moves up to the Red Division next season. So that should be an interesting uh, task here for Rich Miano. Now, does a team from the Red Division drop down if uh, if uh, Kaiser moves up? They don't know quite yet. Well, I mean, there are some rules to this. I mean, really, kind of any team can switch. Any team can switch with uh, anybody in the division. As long as uh, each of those two teams agree. So if Kahuku, you know, theoretically wanted to drop into the white, the white <laughs> and a white team agreed to that, they would have to go through the proper procedures. And I believe Kai McKee, who stepped up last year, uh, will drop back down and allow Kaiser to come up. And it should be interesting. With uh, we'll, we'll touch up on that uh, after this play. Brings up second down and 15 off the penalty. Foy in the pocket, chased out again by guess who? Kennedy Tuli Masali. Foy on the run. Got to do something. Three men on him. He throws. This is incomplete. Solomon Liana there on the coverage as it was intended for Kai Gonda again. Wow. What the scrambling capability of Reese Foy getting away from pressure. And even Solomon Liana gives him a tap on the helmet and tells him, hey, great job. I thought you did a tremendous job avoiding pressure. But uh, going back to it, you know, Fisi Fetisi Manu. That is gonna. That's a name we're gonna hear a lot of next year for the Kaiser Cougars. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. Six foot three, 260 pound defensive tackle. Rich Miano right. has told me that he thinks he's top ten in the in the state of Hawaii wow. defensively. That's how good he is. And I got a chance to see him play 
Tremendous defensive tackle. Coming from Miano, that means a lot. Yai in it, quarterback throws on a play action pass, far side. It is hauled in at the 35 yard line. Like Kui Williams there. McKinley Tiger, 6'3, 230 pounder, takes it to the 35. What a throw there from Kahaku. Yeah, he had to put some touch on that right over the shoulder. Uh, to uh, Kui Williams at a uh, tight end, six foot three, two hundred and thirty pounds, uh, doing a good job. He, on the season, he has six catches, fifty nine yards, uh, no touchdowns, but a tremendous job over the shoulder catch and keeping his feet in bounds. Yeah, I will stay in at quarterback under center. Kainalu Kaleo, the fullback here, and he'll give it to Kaleo. First man up, and he gets stopped right by Michael Tali Ulu. Six foot two hundred ten pounder, representing Naali from Aiea, the linebacker. But before that, we're going to get a flag. It's a false start against the East. Yeah, right tackle, I believe, number 75 for the East. And that was Michael Boyd, the six foot one, 290 pound offensive lineman from Farrington. Twin bro is it a twin brother, or is it a, just a brother in Mitchell Boyd? A twin brother. Is it, it is a yeah. twin brother. Which is weird because one of them is 20 pounds more. <laughs> How does that happen? First down and about 15 here. Ball moves back to the 40. For Iaya and the East. Quick throw. This is juggled and caught on the far side. Like Tanner Nishioka hauled it in. Or making Francis Evangelia able to haul it in. Now, it, Blazely Elite on the corner able to make the stop. We've had that problem with the name. We, we've called it as Evangelia. We've seen it as N Evangelia. Yeah. So uh, we, should, we should get a word on it and yeah. see uh, what exactly his uh, last name is. I've been told, as they've been saying it here in the press box, uh, Evangelia. So Evangelia. I'll just stick with that. So it's spelled on the roster as well. well so. At least we know who to blame. <laughs> <laughs> eight, oh, 8 here to go. Third quarter. Second down and. 10 here for the East squad. Yeah, I understand it. We got movement on the line. This one is going back. Taiman Hayashi out of pack five. He jumped a little early. Six foot one, 280 pound senior from pack five. Right guard with 750 and counting here. Talk about the Boyd brothers and each of them, first team OIA East, was just recently announced. 7.40 here to go. Again, second down and 15. The eye on a quick inside slant for Evangelia, incomplete. Yeah, the eye looking for that slant route to Evangelia, and uh, he's got to make that catch a little behind him, but on the slant route. He's got to give him more leeway, and Yaya trying to give him that slant round, give him some uh, cushion to make some running room. Because he catches that. He he had some space to move, and, you know, Evangelia is, uh, we've seen him before, a deep play threat for Farrington. He's done a good job throughout the years as a governor in catching the football. Now it's third down and 15 here. Pace has sort of died down, slowed down certainly. The eye on a give up the middle. And gaining about seven yards there with 7.25 here to go. Zen Ikehara comes in to make the stop. And talking a little bit about Zen Ikehara, the six foot two, 210 pound linebacker. He's been a playmaker for that defense in David Stan and the Kamehameha Warriors in the last two, three years. He's, he's done a tremendous job defensively. He plays that rover as well. He plays that safety position, bumps up to outside linebacker, can uh, go to that middle position as well. But uh, David Stan's going to lose a great football player in uh, Zen Ike Ikehara. Kevin Kim on that last carry. Now he's lined up to the right of Yaya on fourth and eight. Throwing his EI off the hands, intercepted. Picked out of the air. Deflected off the hands of Blaze Lee Lee and into the hands of Kaeo Kanoa. Out of Kapole. Yeah, Lee Lee could have had an initial uh, interception, but it, def it deflects off of him, and then uh, Kael Kanoa comes up with a pick and an interception, and the West will have the football at about the 32-yard line. Uh, give credit, or excuse me, is the 28-yard line 
uh, for the West squad. Good defense uh, right there. Good defense to stop. So here comes the West now. 6.42 here to go. First and 10 on their own 28-yard line. With it is Stevens on a low snap. Had to scoop it up. And off he goes running. And taken down by Isaiah Tavai out of Farrington, the middle linebacker, comes in to make the tackle. McCoy is quick. He is very fast. He's got the ability to scamper. And it, he's, you know, not only he has he improved as a, as a passer in the last two years, uh, his speed is an asset in that play action game. Uh, that uh, Kamehameha and David Stance uh, utilizes very well. <laughs> and again, another defensive stop here from the East up the middle. Ezra Soli in the initial big tackle along with his uh, partners in crime, uh, Rashawn Falemalu, as well as uh, defensive tackle Jeremiah Tallini from Kailua, 6'2", 315-pound senior. I shouldn't be saying senior. There's too many seniors. Yeah. They're all seniors. They're all seniors. <laughs> Five thirty-eight here to go. Five thirty-eight here to go. As here comes Stevens. This one off the hands and incomplete. Five twenty-nine here to go. Brings a fourth down. Now the East trying to. Uh, Make something off this punt return as Nicholas Kwan again back deep and Sawat Yunai will punt it away for the West. A defensive uh, battle here between each of these two teams. He's had some momentum going there. Sawat Yunai puts a right boot into it. This is over the head of Kwan and look at this bounce. From the 18 all the way down to the 11 yard line. Now, do you use Isaac Savainai as a punter or a linebacker in college? Both. <laughs> 71 yard punt. Did you say 71 yard punt? Yeah. From the 18 to the 11. 71 yeah. yards. I did my math yeah. correct for 32 once in my plus life. 39. Wow. <laughs> what school did I go to? Wait, no. don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> you got a Punahou guy? You're a Punahou guy? I'm a Moana Lua guy? And what do you call Moana Lua again? I, you always uh, have a phrase for them. Well, it's been, I, I believe this was written in the paper about years ago. It's uh, It's been known as the public school's private school. Ah. It's a good school, though. It's a very, a very, very good school. school, yeah. Special shout out going out to uh, Arnold Martinez, head coach over there at Moana Lua. Watching us live here on scoringlive.com. Foy on first down, hands off for Wiley, and Wiley gets stopped into the backfield. You know, we were wondering what it took to stop a guy like Wiley. Apparently it took all the best defensive players <laughs> from the west side to stop him because Wiley hasn't really had anything going here on the ground. No, he he actually hasn't, and, and this is uh, similar to the offense they run. Uh, Randall Kimoto runs it basically around the same packages of the, uh, the Kohuku Red Raiders. But when you put the 11 best defensive players against Alfonso Wiley, I think we found the formula to stop in him. <laughs> when you have Talmua and Wiley and Silva, that's a combined nearly 5,000 yards combined between those three. Wiley's done an amazing job for Kahuku his last couple years. Wiley to the right, he'll pass protect for Foy. He's got to get out of the end zone and down goes Foy with the ball popped out. Tuli Maseli forced the fumble. It's still loose. And the referees are holding up three fingers. It will be ruled third down here. And if you don't think Kennedy Tui Masia Lee is playing hard, and you're watching this on scoringlive.com, he absolutely pounded Reese Foy. And Reese Foy was very slow to get up. I mean, Kennedy Tui Masia Lee.
Morikawa on the run. First down, Morikawa stepping out at the 24 yard line. Do it. Tell you what. On pursuit, I'll tell you there. Siamal Mapu. Yeah. Siamal Mapu came in there. He came up an eyelash short of getting to Morikawa. Then Morikawa used that elusiveness that we've seen all year long. And that's the vision he has. He's able to see that in the pocket and able to scamper up because if he doesn't look, Ezra Soli is going to take his head off. But good job by Morikawa to scamper out, pick up a big first down for the West Squad. First down and 10, 2.48 here to go. Give on the near side and a big pop as Sato got rocked. And thankfully, he's okay. Chance and Xambi, the Kaimaki free safety, 5'9", 155, along with Sato. If you saw that, that was a boom. And luckily, like you said, Felipe, both of those guys were able to get up from that hit. Wow. Oh, boy. Now we'll bring up second down and about eight. Morikawa out of the gun. Morikawa with a fade for Liana. Incomplete. I'll make it Keanu Chi, I beg your pardon. Incomplete. And I'll bring up third down. Chi and Liana both wearing 88. Chi tried to get the step on that near sideline. And Chi's been hungry to get into the end zone all year. Yeah. He's been one of those guys who've been, like I said, for the buff and blue, coming across the middle, making those big catches. But he's yet to get in the end zone. So I know he's hungry to get in there for uh, his one last time as a senior. He had three defenders on him. He had two, uh, two defensive backs for the East, and he had that sideline he had to flirt with as well. Third down and eight. Morikawa out of the gun. Morikawa got away from another man, throws across his body up top, and it is... Hauled in. Tony Pacetto coming up with a big catch over the middle. And all five, nine of him had to leap up for that ball. Great pursuit by the defensive front for the E squad. But even better play by Jaron Morikawa. Once again, able to elude pressure and find Pacetto for a first down. Gain of 17. Richard Parham, the free safety out of Moanalua. Transferred over from Texas. Able to make the stop. Now it's first and goal here. Remember, it's inside the 10, so really anything goes here defensively. You can get out of your 4-3 alignment. And now you'll see the blitz. Morikawa's got Kyle Sato behind him. Morikawa, pressure up the middle, got away. Up the middle, to the goal line. Touchdown. And Jaron Morikawa, 10 yards to the house, able to elude pressure. Uh, with that blitz inside the 10-yard line, able to step up in the pocket, able to elude some defenders, and score a touchdown for the West squad. 13-6 to six now. Buck 19 here to go in this third quarter. And came in Conley, trying to tack on the extra point. Trying to go 2-2 two for two on the night. Off the hole from Padrina, bobbled hole, but a good job by Padrina to get it down, and Conley kicks it through. 1-19 here to go. It is 14-6, and this is the 22nd annual Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl on ScoringLive.com. Back here at Kunuya oh. Kea Stadium here in the campus of Kamehameha Kapalam. Apologies for the uh, audio difficulties here, but everything seems to be straight as this kick is into the end zone, and the East will have it at their own 20-yard line. This is the first touchback of the game, and it comes at the 119 mark here of this third quarter. Felipe Ohasio, Mark Veneri, Morikawa, about a six-yard run to the end zone for the touchdown, and it is 14-6, to still a one-possession game here. Have we uh, yet to hear where Jared Morikawa is going to go to school? I know it's between Illinois State and Weber State. No. We haven't heard of a commitment yet out of Morikawa. Yeah, nothing yet uh, as recent uh, as recent really as this morning. But certainly wherever he ends up, you know they're going to get an absolute gem and another guy like Jared Morikawa. Good football IQ, uh, a good person. Got to talk to him in practice uh, um, a couple times and um, just it, it couldn't happen to a, a better kid for uh, for Jared Morikawa and just uh, again another great player and represents Mililani very very well 
You're going to get a flag here at the line. This one is going to go against the East. Another delay of game. I haven't seen too many flags in this game as well. When we have, it's only been about five-yard penalties. Yeah, it's uh, been the formation or they're coming in for the blitz or you, you got to pay that once again play that base 4-3 no blitzing unless you're inside the 10-yard line and uh, both defenses I mean even with the 4-3 without the blitz they've been playing a tremendous draw, uh, job up front it is Iaya under center he'll throw it near side for Talmua going deep for Tomalor Kareni Tomalor touchdown wow Let's wait for it. And Tyler Talmua showing off his gun. Keone Tomalar just scampered on a fly route. Toss sweep. Halfback toss sweep. Tyler Talmua. Keone Tomalar to the house. Interesting situation here for Randall Okimoto. It's only a, a minute and six seconds here into the third. We haven't seen very much offense out of the E squad. But Tyler Talmua, and he and he played that quarterback position against Kahuku in the semifinal game, and he showed off his arm strength. He just showed it off once again. Great hookup to Keone Tamala on a pack five. Missed the first game of the year because of a shoulder injury. Well, that shoulder she seems to be uh, working pretty well. Going for two of the East squad. Iaya, play action, the fade for the tie. This is incomplete, taken out of the air. And we still have a two-point game here. The Blaze of the Elite coming up with an interception in the back of the end zone. And yes, you said it, two-point game. Trickeration uh, from the E squad. Tyler Talmua, Tom Millar, touchdown. We've seen a lot of uh, a lot of great plays over these last few weeks. Another good one there from Tyler Talmua hooking up with Keone Tom Millar, listed as one of the backup Quarterbacks here, of course, Tom Millar out of Pack 5. That's good receiving numbers by the end of 2012, heading into tonight. Tom Millar had 15 catches, 208 yards, averaged 14 a catch, and four touchdowns. He took that one back 80 yards. And he also had 150 carries for 731 yards, nine touchdowns for the Pack 5 Wolfpack this year. So we'll see how the West will respond. Back deep is Brandon Johnston here out of Wai'anae High School. Here comes a squib kick on the far side. West chasing after it, and Johnston scoops it up inside the 15. Trying to work the sideline. Johnston still in bounds. Trying to cut it back to the middle, and Johnston's going to finally be taken down at the 34-yard line. As Richard Parham, again the free safety out of Moana Lua, makes a stop. We got ourselves a ball game here. If these can uh, rally off a couple big defensive plays here. Still a lot of football. We haven't seen a lot of close ones uh, this past year, at least in the broadcast that we have done. Yeah. But uh, that uh, battle between Lahaina Luna, and what a job they did this past year. I mean, they battled hard to the, to the absolute end. They had that lead. Uh, in the in the late uh, minute of that state championship game against Iolani, and Iolani able to pull it out. Here's a handoff to the near side at the 40. It's Paul Andrew Roden. And Paul out of Campbell, take it to the 42-yard line. First down. Omar Silva with a big hit on the near sideline, but a uh, credit Roden. Good job running the football in that end around sweep. I beg your pardon. That's my fault. Dustin Munar there on the handoff. Out of Damien. Munar's had a solid season as well. Munar, 23 catches, 355 yards. You got me all confused. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> 36 seconds. And Stevens out of the gun here. Stevens handoff up the middle to the 49-yard line of the East. Ryan Tuya so getting the carry for the West squad. Bring up second down and about six here. Filling in nicely for Steven Lakalaka -Laka this past year, making the transition from linebacker to running back. Really, really wants to go to Utah. He's uh, been talking with them. Not sure if he's got an offer from Utah quite yet. 
And we're going to get a, another whistle here, and that's going to be the end of the third quarter. 7-6 at the end of the half, 14-12 at the end of three, fourth and final quarter. Coming up when you come back to Kapalama, you're listening to and watching the 2012 Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl right here on ScoringLive.com. Wow. Fourth quarter, here we go. As the West have it, as Stevens throws near side and up top. What a grab by Keone Paceno. They're going to give him the catch. He was out of bounds, Felipe. But they're going to give him the catch anyways. Even better catch by Keone Paceno at the 35-yard line. Great throw on the outside. And the great catch, uh, but the officials uh, missed that one, Felipe. Gain a 17 there on the catch. <laughs> he caught the football about a foot out of bounds. <laughs> And they still gave it to him. Ball plays at the 35-yard line. Stevens. He'll put Sean Dos Santos now out of Wailua. He'll replace Ryan Tuyasoa. He'll fake the give to Dos Santos. And here comes Stevens racing to the sidelines. And Stevens take it. For about three yards to around 32. We know Sangapolu making a pressure on the outside. Javid Mohital uh, forcing Kamanse Stevens out of bounds. A uh, pickup of about four yards on first down. Well, another season coming to an end, Felipe. I know. it's It, it really is the fastest three months of the year. Prep football season. Basketball season about to kick up. Stevens out of the gun again. Here's a handoff for for Dos Santos. And Dos Santos uh, will move his way near the original line of scrimmage. He'll bring up third down. They're going to mark it for minus half a yard here. It'll be third down in about seven. West lead it by two. East opened the game on an 80-yard run by Abraham Silva for the touchdown. Stevens, time, throws. This is bobbled incomplete. Looks like he took a short hop initially as I couldn't get into the hands of Austin Gerrard. Looking for that wire hookup on the outside. The dig route at about the 19-yard line. Kamanse Stevens a little bit under through him. Uh, Gerard on the outside. Ten fifty-eight here to go. Fourth down, and the West are going to go for it. Ryan Tui is still on the back here. Fourth down in about eight. Stevens three-step drop lays it for Tui Soa, and Tui Soa cut it back just. A little bit to the inside. He'll take it to the 22-yard line. And it's going to be short of the first down. Make it the 27-yard line. And the East will take over with 10.51 down two. Yeah, Ryan Tui, so we, we've seen that swing route that you know, Tui Tui Leta likes to, likes to do on the outside. And uh, Punahou, you know, talking about rebuilding for next year. Punahou returns. Seven of 11 starters on both sides of the football. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the ILH next year. Some guys to look out for, at least defensively. Canton Kamatule, brother of Luke Kamatule. Of course, how can you forget a guy who is probably going to be expected to play into uh, the Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl next season. Uh, of course, Tui Tui Letta. Kind of I know is just a sophomore. He's got two more years of football in him. Hey, he passed Jeremiah Ostrowski uh, for the single season record for receiving yards in a season. We got another flag. This one thrown by Vern Nakamoto. Be another delay of game. How many delay of games have we seen in this game? About five or so. Yeah, the E squad has a, a lot of delay of games uh, in this football game. And you know, going back to it as well, and you know, there's going to be another kid that we're going to watch out for the, for the next two years, and a gentleman by the name of Ryder Coons. Uh, he's one of my, uh, you know, favorite quarterbacks, I guess, in the state of Hawaii. Great, great quarterback. That's going to be a guy to watch out for. For the Crusaders as well. Foy will throw in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. That's Yuya Kato. It's a name we haven't called here tonight. Kato was big in that uh, game against Lahaina Luna. Kato came in 
with 832 rushing yards, 283 receiving yards. Kata was all over the place that D2 title game against the Lunas. So slippery out of the backfield. He's able to catch it as well. And uh, he's had over 800 yards, like you said. Yuya Kato, great threat for the Raiders. Second down and five here. Looks like Kainalu Kaleo to the left of Foy. Foy chased from behind, and down he goes. Andrew, Andrew Sissi Pasara and Manny Perese. I'm sorry. That's your job. <laughs> I apologize for the You're excited. No, you're good. I got excited. I like seeing Manny Perese play, and I've said it throughout the whole year. Defensively, he's one of the most underrated defensive tackles in the state of Hawaii. And uh, Boise State giving him some recognition, along with a couple of other schools. And uh, Manny Perese has done a great job for Rod York and the Trojans. Yeah, another guy in defense for Rod York, Jacob Fele, big 55. He's made some huge hits for the Trojans this season. He should be another stud on the defensive side here for the Trojans. Ten minutes here to go in regulation. Third down and very, very long. Ball on the 13-yard line. First down available at the 37. They need 24. Foy goes for it. Near side, incomplete. Too tall for the intended receiver, the big tight end, Tyler Liano. He can run out there. I mean, he's six foot, 255 pounds on the outside, able to run down the field. He has some good speed at a tight end position. Just unfortunately, Reese Foy overthrew him on the outside, had a step on the defensive back. Uh, number four, AJ uh, uh, Alega from IAF, 5'8", 160 pound. I was going to say senior again. My goodness, they're all seniors. And how about this? We're going to have Tanner Nishioka punting to what appears to be Isaac Savainaya. <laughs> Nishioka got it up. Good boot. Savainaya may have a chance from the 48. Look at the big man go. Savainaya trying to get free. <laughs> they got taken down. And his shoe came off. He's trying to use that speed, that 4-6 speed. The number one rated spark combine in the country linebacker. He decommitted from Stanford. And uh, he has UCLA, Texas A&M hot in his heels to get a commit out of Isaac Savainaya. Justin Isobe, one of the guys there to make the tackle. Isobe out of Kaiser High School. And with 9.33 here to go, the West... Gonna try and tack on to this two-point lead. Kukahiko in the backfield, along right. with Morikawa. We got Paseno and Chi, the two receivers to the bottom. Here's Morikawa. He'll lay it off for Kukahiko on the near side, and Kukahiko will take it all the way down to the 25-yard line. Kukahiko is actually the cousin of Ian Kukahiko, a big uh, offensive lineman here for the West. For sitting right next to his family, his family couldn't be the nicest people in the world, without a doubt. They've been awesome. And for Ian, he's getting looks from uh, from a lot of different schools, and namely Oklahoma as well. So possibly a future sooner. A big boy too, six foot four, or six foot two, two hundred fifty pounds. Father and mother said that he's gained some weight, lifting weights. Here he is again. Jacob Kukahiko on the near sideline at the 20. And Jacob Kukahiko takes it all the way down to the 18-yard line. Yeah, Omar Silva making the tackle. But Kukahiko, he's been a compact runner out of that new spread formation uh, for Darren Hernandez, changing the offense from that option attack. He had 126 carries, 719 yards, nine touchdowns. Kukahiko will remain in the backfield. To Corey Briscoe, along with Austin Gerard, the two receivers near the top of the screen. Morikawa out of the gun. Morikawa with time. Kukahiko open, dropped it, incomplete. Second down. Oh, Kukahiko could have had easy six. He was <laughs> wide open. On the 20 yard line. <laughs> oh, ho. Yikes. I'm sure, Kukuhiko will get that one back, though. Kukuhiko will remain in the game. 5'11, 210 pounder out of Kapole. Morikawa throws far side. This is complete. It is Briscoe. 
And Briscoe gets walloped by a plethora of red jerseys there. I'm used to, uh, used to you seeing a plethora of red jerseys from the Kahuku Red Raiders and Javen Mohitao making that tackle. Along with Kujay Tapasoa at the linebacker position making that good hit on Briscoe. Not before he picks up nine solid yards. The third down and one here. Again, Gerard Briscoe to the top. Paseno and Chi to the bottom as the receivers. Kukahiko behind Morikawa. Here comes Jacob. Across the left side and down he goes. Basilio again. Able to make the stop along with Kujay Tapusola. Kujay, he's uh, been kind of a, a vocal guy on the defensive squad for the east uh, for the east side. And it looks like the west. We're not going to sure if they're going to go for it here. Fourth down. Well within field goal range for Conley. Man. I'm going to take a timeout. Coach David Stant and the Warriors will talk about this one. Each of these two coaches, two of the great guys to talk to about football anytime. David Stant for the West, Randall Okimoto for the East. For David Stant, he's been here for about half a decade and uh, won a state championship 2009. That unbelievable defense that the Warriors had back then three years ago, looking to try and uh, get his Warriors back to ILH glory. Came close to it last season. Remember, it was a playoff game between Punahou and Kamehameha. A game decided really by six inches. Yeah, right literally. At the goal line. Yeah. You know, and a player that the the, the Punahou Buff and Blue truly missed. And uh, I'm putting, I'm drawing a blank right now. He he was number six. He had to sit out this year for the Punahou Buff and Blue, and I'm drawing a blank. I. I can't put uh, put a thumb on it. This I, uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna get it. Uh, I promise you, I'll get it. Seven forty three here to go. Number six for Puno this year. Last year. Oh, last year. He had to sit out. He was a wine eye transfer, and I can't put a thumb on it. I'm sure, our friends on scoringlive.com will help us out with that. But we tend to uh, our business here. As Gerard, mid receiver up top here for the West Squad. I got it. Javin Kavai. There you go. That's who it I was. I remember Javin Kavai. As, uh, here's a play action pass for Morikawa. Throwing end zone. It is caught. Just short of the goal line, however. I think that was Big Kennedy Tui Masaya Lee. It was. A big six foot two, 280 pounder. He wanted that touchdown. I don't think he smelt the end zone yet in his career, but he almost got there, making it fourth, or excuse me, first and goal, picking up a first down on that play, about the two-yard line for the West squad. Special thanks to Ikaika Sugui in the chat room there, also writing down Jamie Kavai. Thank you very much, Ikaika. Appreciate it. 7.20 here to go. And now we got moving on the line, <laughs> and we got about 450 referees in front of us who made that call. Ball start. <laughs> and that was Kennedy Tui Masayali jumping a little early to meet and greet Siamal Mapu on the other side of the defensive end position. Both of them great players. You know, we're looking inside this uh, Scoring Life chat room. And again, we're glad that all of you are with us here on ScoringLive.com. We have uh, Tim Momiyama Jr. in the uh, chat room. Again, he was the kicker for Lelehua in that uh, double overtime uh game against Kahuku. Big shout out to you, Tim. Hope all is well. We haven't formally met, but we recognize your name. 6.51 here to go. Morikawa. First in goal. Throws the fade for Paseno. He bobbled it. Incomplete. Just in and out of his hands as Mohitao and Kujay Tapuso, a pair of Red Raiders, they would have swamped him in that corner. That would have been a tremendous catch by Paseno in the back of the end zone. He almost came up with that. But credit Mohitao and Kujay Tapasoa making a good deflection in the back of the end zone. Got a lot of guys in the chat room tonight. Big time. 6.44 here to go. 14 to 12 our score. West going to try and tack on to their two-point lead. And we're going to get another flag at the line again. Well, remember, now we're within the 10-yard line. The defense can blitz here. 
See what Vern Nakamoto calls here. He's going to go against the defense. Well, is that a legal formation or? Like a legal substitution. I couldn't quite see the hand gesture from our I think you're point. right. I think it wasn't yeah. a legal substitution. I think they had 12 men on the football field. So move the ball back to around the five yard line. So bring up second down and goal here. Hiko is the tailback. Morikawa has been solid tonight here for the Trojans. We'll shift everyone to the left. Morikawa throws. This is incomplete. Trying to hook up with Keanu Chi. Chi couldn't haul it in as Richard Parham was swarming him. Yeah, good defense by Richard Parham, uh, the Texas transfer to Moana Lua. Good coverage on the outside. Chi looking for his first touchdown. That couldn't come up with the grab. Some of uh, Richard's uh, family members, I believe, also in the scoring live chat room. 6.37 here to go. Third down and goal. Seems like we've been on this side of the field forever. I'll tell you that. Fukuhiko right behind Morikawa. Morikawa pressure up the middle, got away. Now throw. This is caught. Touchdown, Keone Pazzetto. Trojan to Mule for six. Oh, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm pretty sure we caught that on video. They threw up the ball. Keone Pisano, uh, just like it dropped in a bomb, and all the players went down. Good camaraderie by the West squad. Great, great scampering ability by Jaron Morikawa, able to find Keone Pisano in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, West squad. 20-12, to 12, a big extra point here would make it a two-possession game here. Jaron Villegas going to come off the bench. Villegas, another Lelehua mule. He'll come to the line. Conley getting ready to go for another extra point. Off the hold from Padrina. Got it down. Got it up. That one's right down King Street. 21 to 12. 6 31 here to go. Corey Calway, three yard pass to Pacino. And while we have a moment, we want to send a special shout out and special thank you again to the Hawaii Union Builders and uh, them allowing us to uh, cover this game here live on scoringlive.com. They do a great job uh, with financial aid and support of high school athletics. $700,000 or so given uh, in total over these last two decades to a lot of football players and a lot of other high school athletes. And uh, thank you so much for uh, Wayne Chun and the great gang at the Hub. Also, Hawaii Self Storage. Thank you so much for hopping on board and your support of Hawaii High School Athletics. In this game in association with OC16, this is the final game here in 2012. This prep football season. Before you know it, basketball is going to cream up and then baseball season will hit. And then we'll be right back at football. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're inching very close, uh, very close to the uh, Eoline Classic coming up. A couple weeks away. 6.31 here to go as uh, we're going to get a fake approach here from the west side. Taking out of one of the Kahuku. <laughs> Conley will tee this one up. Here comes Conley for Radford. Picks it deep and this is into the end zone for a touchback. It's out of the hands of Kai Gonda, who I'm sure was very desperate to try and at least make some kind of return on it. Kai Gonda, special player out of the Kaiser Cougars. I, I know we've touched upon it. Rich Miano, who's here tonight, watching Kai Gonda. Doing a good job running the football, yeah. catching the football. He also plays the linebacker as well. Good safety also. He, he plays uh, as, as well as – we've seen this throughout yeah. as a, the, the hybrid of a rover. Uh, kind of a, a linebacker slash safety, able to play all over the place. And Kai Gonda has uh, filled that position quite nicely. Gonda's almost scored a touchdown in every possible way. He's got two kickoff returns for touchdown, a couple of punt returns for touchdown as well. As we got a flag down at the line after Akuyaya tried to hand it off. Go check the marker here with the 626 mark of this fourth quarter. I'm going to... 
Kukiba in for the tackle for Radford. Only against the E squad. Procedure penalty. We have an amazing setup here for ScoringLive.com, and uh, it's um, we're going to thank a lot of them uh, in our post-game show. Hope you stick around for that. As uh, if we could only take a picture of this setup that we have, we have wires coming out of everywhere, allowing uh, uh, at least trying to bring this game to everybody on ScoringLive.com. What a tremendous job by this crew! You know, Brian Ng and the crew over here has done an absolutely marvelous job. And hopefully this is a thing uh, that could uh, be in the future, you know, for uh, high school sports. Without a doubt, E.I. on a handoff to Wiley. He gave it back to Millar, who's going to throw it short and incomplete for a wide open Tyler Liana. Wow. And, you know, an another thing to touch up on, and, and uh, it's a really a tribute to the athletes out here. There have been no injuries yeah. tonight, which is uh, great to see uh, out here. No injuries. The spirits are high. You know, it, it's good. It, it's a very, very fun, family-like Ohana atmosphere here. Good hey. crowd on hand. Yeah. How about that play, though? Yaya to Wiley to Tom Millar, who threw it for Liana. Ends up as an incomplete pass, and it's third down and about eight. Iaya lost the ball, got it back though. Now will toss it, and this is incomplete again. Trying to hook up with Tanner Nishioka. Bring up fourth down, and the East will punt it away. We haven't seen too much of Alfonga Wiley and Tyler Tom Ward tonight. The two special backs from the East. And <laughs> once again, Isaac, just to keep this in mind, Felipe, Isaac Savayanaya, uh, two years ago, in the 2011 football season, the opening kickoff against Roosevelt, he took it 98 yards to the house. Remember, he has 4'6 speed, too. <laughs> the guy who's 6'3", 240 pounds. Sessa Posar came off the corner to try and block it. Nishioka got it away. Fair catch called by Silva Inaya at the 45-yard line. You almost want to see him not call the fair catch and yeah. see what he can do. But I think that was a smart move. He had six swarming red jerseys all over him. And doing the smart thing by Isaac Savainai, who will be going on to play in the Under Armour Bowl on ESPN. And yeah, just recently had his uh, jersey ceremony, so congratulations to him. And again, Kanten Kamatuli again coming back for the Buff and Blue to help try and anchor that defense. A lot of offensive weapons come back for the Buff and Blue as well. Samisi Uluvale, same yep. class, six foot five, three hundred pound offensive tackle. Both of them, Canton Kamatuli as well as uh, Samisi Uluvale, top 150 by ESPN in their class. And there'll be two players that uh, we'll be looked to see here in the near future. We're going to get another legal substitution as they broke the huddle with 12 men as Chi tried to come running off the field. Tried to sneak out of there. <laughs> you take a look at all, like, when you look back at this football season and, and just all the great storylines that sort of came about, you know, the resurgence of Nanakuli football and what their staff has done to uh, bring the community back into it as a handoff for Paseno on the end around. And Paseno will get back to the line of scrimmage. Look at the great job that the neighbor island teams have done. Your corner line uh, putting up uh, over 90 points earlier this season. And then you have Kahuku. The tile comes back to the North Shore as they uh, top the buff and blue. It's just really been a season full of so many emotional and great storylines. And uh, we end it tonight with the Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl. Second down. And about 16 now. Luceno going to throw the ball near side. It is Briscoe incomplete. Just short of his reach. Javid Mojitao on the coverage. Jacob Pitt putting pressure on Paseno. Keone Paseno has a brother, I believe, who's going to be coming back for the Lelehua uh, Mules next season. Ikaika Paseno. And both of those guys uh, transferred from Campbell over to uh, Lelehua. And when speaking to Coach Nolan Takuda about that, he said, you know, well, they have really been best blessings in disguise. And they gelled in to this offense and gelled in well with this team as Stevens tosses it back to Paul Andrew Roden and the Saber look at the grittiness on Andrew oh. Roden taking hits standing up and finally gets stopped 
for a loss of one at the 38. They definitely weren't soft hits. I tell you that. You can hear uh, the the hitting and the katujas. Javen Mohitao, Chong Gum on the tackle, uh, laying the head uh, along with about seven, eight other guys for the Red E squad making the tackle. Conley will be punting this football away about five minutes here in the fourth quarter. Set to Fano Labatai. Back deep here. One of ten governors here on this E squad. Conley will put the right boot into it, end over end punt. And what will Labatai do? He'll take it on the run. Labatai far side. Needs a block. He's got one. Now he needs two more. Trying to get away from Tuli Masali. And just his presence, it seems, took Labatai out of bounds. But a great return by Labatai to the 32-yard line. He almost baited you on that and, and returning the ball. You didn't think he was going to get it. And then Sitifon and Labatai exploded. Uh, it's a great blocking as well and, and scampering all the way down to the 29-yard line. Excuse me, the 32-yard line. Good pickup by Sitifon and Labatai. As we mentioned, uh, Kennedy Tulima Seili. Uh, the defensive player of the year here. Well, it's at the final Lavatai. Another Lavatai in the Farrington squad. Sanelli Lavatai coming back for the Governors. As Wiley is in there at the running back spot now. Reese Foy, the quarterback. Three receivers as they'll send Kui Williams in motion. Now he's in the left slot. Foy, deep drop. Over the middle, just short of Tanner Nishioka. Ooh, Alessi Sale putting good pressure. The defense at the end in front of my hand, 6'3", 230. Good pressure on Reese Foy. But look at the pocket presence by Reese Foy, able to step up, recognize the pressure on the outside, able to make a decent throw to Tanner Nishioka, a little overthrown on the post route. 4.36 here to go. See how Coach Okimoto will try and play this out. Foy again. Far side, Foy, throwing. Up top, caught. Tanner Nishioka got bumped by Noah Yap out of Kamehameha, the free safety, all the way down to the seven yard line. It's a pick up a 25. Yeah, that's been the special connection here tonight from the Iolani Red Raiders. Or excuse me, Iolani Raiders. Good comeback route uh, by Tanner Nishioka on the outside. Good pressure up front from the West squad. And then Reese Foy able to elude pressure and then able to make a good throw on the run. First down. He's still in this game. Foy throws incomplete. And a flag's going to be thrown here as Nishioka got walloped. On the coverage by Noah Yap. I'll tell you what, Tanner Nishioka had some words. You don't think they're playing hard out here. Let's just clarify everything. These guys are playing very hard. Tanner Nishioka didn't quite like that from the Kamehameha Warrior and fellow ILH uh, opponent in Noah Yap. So again, with 4-11 here to go, West lead it by 9. And the score here will make things very, very interesting down the stretch. As they move the ball now down to the three. We'll see if Wiley will get it here. Wiley to the left of four. Nishioka at the top. They'll go right to him. Caught. Touchdown. Nice throw by Reese Foy, that back shoulder fade to Tanner Nishioka for the Raider connection and a touchdown. The E-Squad making things interesting here in the fourth quarter with 407, 21-18 West. See what the East decide to go for here. I haven't seen too many extra points here. Of course, they're going to try and go for two. So Wiley... In the backfield with four. Kato and Nishioka on the near side. That's the Iolani side. They'll throw to Nishioka in there for the conversion. Now it's a one-point game with 4.07 to go. Hang tight. Yeah, Bronson Funakoshi, the defensive back, draped all over Nishioka. Great throw on the slant route from Reese Foy to Nishioka on a two-point conversion. 
making this a one-point football game. Still a lot of football to be played here. It was 7-6 at the half. West led. Again, East win, uh, leaves the series 10-9. They tied twice. This is the 22nd meeting between the East and the West. Of course, the West won it last year, 46-14. to I'm sure the East uh, would like some revenge after that 47-14 victory. Once again, Keaton Sadanaga, 375 yards passing in last year's Hub All-Star game. You know, when LC-16 does games from uh, Kanuya Kea Stadium here at Kamehameha, you know, you know, they're, you know, with their HD cameras, they capture some of the beautiful sights and the sounds here on campus. But uh, until you see it in person, folks, it is really one of the most unbelievable places to watch a football game, especially with this brand-new field trip that Kamehameha got to just this season. It's unbelievable, Felipe. Yeah. I mean, you got the backdrop. All you see is the city lights of Honolulu. Merry Christmas to everyone as well. Happy holidays. It's a boot to Poseno who has to chase it down from the two. Poseno cuts it back to the middle. Had a crease and Poseno got yanked by his jersey. Still on his feet as he takes it to the 32-yard line. Return of 30 as Justin Isobe, the Kaiser linebacker, comes in to make the stop. Yeah, Pisano is so shifty, so elusive. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, 813 receiving yards this year. The transfer from Campbell to Lelehua, Coach Nolan Takuda. Uh, definitely uh, thankful to have him on his staff. And what a player Keone Pisano has been all year in the West, the OIA West, and in the wild, wild West for yeah. a while. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't really pick a winner until the end when Mililani pulled away. East have all three of their timeouts left. West have two. 3.59 here to go. It's a one-point game. With it is Morikawa on the run. Unloads downfield. It is intercepted. Picked out of the air. Chanson Xavi. What a great interception for the Kaimaki Bulldog. The lone Kaimaki Bulldog coming all the way from across the field and picking off Jaren Morikawa. What an interception by Exave. Uh, Great catch. That ball a little underthrown for Brandon Felici. But as you mentioned, Mark, Exave comes across the field to make the interception. The free safety, representing Bulldog Nation, comes up with a big play. And now that 352 seems like an eternity here for the east side as they try to capture the lead. Reese Foy again. In at quarterback, Wiley to his left. Foy chased out Tuli Masaili, he smells blood. He throws far side and this is incomplete. I, I'm, I'm just absolutely amazed. I, I'm continued to be amazed by Kenny Tuli Masaili, the, the OIA West Player of the Year defensively. Did you see the closing speed he has on yeah. Reese Foy? We already know how fast Reese Foy is. Just imagine, and he's still playing hard. And we're we're talking four quarters now that he's still putting this kind of pressure. Unbelievable. Norm Chow, if you're watching this, you have a great football player coming to your program next year. 344 here to go. Can the East have some Reese Foy magic in him? Delay give Wiley. Up the middle, Wiley trying to break free as Ikehara comes in to yank him down. All the way to the 48-yard line. Gain of about 11. And they give him the first down. Hafunga Wiley's uh, biggest pickup. Able to escape Logan Hano Hano at the last minute on that halfback delay. Hafunga Wiley escaping, eluding, trucking his way down. The East player of the year. Three and a half to go. Here's Foy. Time. Takes a shot downfield. For Nishioka intercepted. Picked out of the air. It's Kaeo Kanoa. Yeah, Reese Foy just threw that ball into double coverage. And Kanoa came up with the ball at the highest point. Great interception 
and the West will have the ball back on the 15-yard line. Again, still not over with 3.25 to go, and the East have all three of their timeouts. Kanoa, out of Kapole High School, 190-pounder. The double coverage, almost like Reese sort of forced that in, almost forced that one in as he tried to hook up with Tanner Nishioka. The West defense holds strong, and now we're gonna we're gonna get a new quarterback here for the West. It is Makoa Stevens. Keanu Chi will be flanked out to the left. Paseno comes on relatively, almost late, really. He's lined up with Chi on the far side. Stevens looking near side, throws for Gerard, complete, and Gerard gets tackled oh. heavily by Mohetal, and the head linesman went down as well, as a lot of the players are trying to uh, tend to him. Puje Tapusoa. Javen, well, there's, there's two things here. Javen Mohetal uh, made the tackle and the hit, and then Puje Tapusoa laid the other hit on that side judge. And they're checking up on him. He took an absolute shot from Kujay Tapuso and, you know, good sportsmanship by Kujay to help up the, um, the umpire. And they're checking up on him. So they want to make sure he's okay. David Stance also in the huddle there. Looks like uh, there's a little bit of bleeding underneath the, that right cheek of the judge. I'll tell you what, there's fans saying suck it up, but... Uh, <laughs> Imagine a Kujay Tapasoa coming at you at six foot, two hundred pounds at full speed, and you have no protection. And that referee took a shot. He will be okay, which is always a good sign. However, is uh, stop the clock at three fifteen here to go. It'll be second down and about eight as Gerard hauled in that two yard catch. Well. Mohitao laid that good hit on Gerard. Once again, Kujay Tapusoa. He's been all over the place tonight defensively for the E squad. Kyle Sato is right behind McCoy Stevens as the great trainers here at Kamehameha attending to the judge on the near side. On what has been a great night for football. At the end of the game, uh, they'll hand out some... Uh, some post-game awards. Of course, the players will get together, shake hands, and have a special ceremony for them. But in the meantime, we still got a whole lot more. It'll be second down in about five. Here's Sato gets chopped down right at the trunks. In on the stop, Matai Pasilio out of Kahuku. After Sato gets a gain of about a yard and a half, we'll bring up third in about three now here, Mark, with three minutes to go. And key here is uh, the clock keeps on running with 2.54 and counting. Yeah. Looks like we're going to get a timeout here, official time. Yeah. And the umpire, good uh, round of applause, and we're all going to give him one as well. He's back. The crowd acknowledges him. Good to see him up. Hey, it's not the players that takes it sometimes. I'd be scared to be an umpire at any level of football. <laughs> 2.45 here to go. East have not used any other timeouts yet. Clock winding down. Here is Stevens. Hand off Sato. And Sato fighting for that first down, depending on the spot here. It's going to be very close to the first down. And the clock's still going. 2.25, 2.24, 2.23. Where are they going to mark this one? It's a first down. So now, if you're Randall Okimoto, you might want to start using some of these uh, timeouts here. Well, they wouldn't want to burn one on first down, so they're, they're going to have to play some stout defense here and uh, not allow the first down markers at about the 36-yard line, the 209 and counting. Has been a fun atmosphere all night, and for a hundred of the players on the field here, as much fun as it is, they want to... Uh, Take home a uh, Hub Goodwill trophy. Stevens on first down. Pressure up the middle. Got away. Stevens with a pump fake. Made a man miss. Wide open on the near side. Got the first down at the 40. To the sideline he goes. Still inbounds and now dives 
down to the 43. Wow, gain of 17. That was a long 17 yards, and give credit to Kamonse Stevens as he's been able to do that all season, scampering out of the pocket and uh, showing his wheels, picking up a big first down. 21 to 20 as the East take their first timeout. This game has been anything, everything that we sort of expected and what we hoped for. It's been awesome. Well, the great uh, the great thing about it, Felipe, is that it's a lot better than last year's 47-14 football game. And uh, we're seeing a lot of good players out here. We saw a lot of good players last year. And a lot of these players we're going to continue to see uh, in their college careers, you know, especially uh, the local guys staying home. We'll see a lot more of them. John Va, uh, Kujay, or no, excuse me, uh, Kennedy Tui Masayali. You know, hopefully some other guys will stay home and play for the University of Hawaii as well. Got it down for, uh, for this game, man. So don't forget we have our uh, post-game show coming up at the end of this one. We'll show you some highlights and uh, you are our final alohas here. As uh, We do want to send a special uh, thank you again. Can't express our gratitude enough for, uh, for Wayne Shun and the gang over at the Hawaii Union Builders as uh, they have done a great job yet again putting on this great event. And look who's in the back Senior Bowl. Take a guess who's in the backfield now. It's Isaac Savalinaya, it looks like. <laughs> First down and 10 here, two timeouts for the East. Minute 38 to go. Savalinaya, handoff up the middle. Savalinaya kind of pinballing <laughs> off everybody, and he gets about five yards. It's what he can't do. <laughs> what can't he do? He punts. He runs the football. He returns kicks. He tackles everybody. As the East take their second time out here with a buck 31 to go. A special player for the Buff and Blue. They're going to really miss him. Coach Kaliane and the ILH champs are going to miss Savayanaya. A lot of, in the beginning of the year, a lot of comparisons uh, to Manti Teo. And uh, you really can't compare the two in, in ability. Uh, I mean, obviously, Manti is on a special level. And Isaac Savayanaya as well. You know, both yep. of them. Uh, came out of the Spark Combine as the number one linebackers in the country. Different years, different time, but both of them great football players. And tonight, uh, this has been a, uh, been a great night for football, obviously. What are you going to remember most about this season? I mean, we've had a lot of memories. You and I have covered a lot of games uh, on radio now on scorenlive.com here. But uh, what are you going to take out of this season, you think? The Kahuku's defense. Yeah. I mean, the, the the special defense that they had, the, the way they were able to play the football, uh, so fast, so furious, uh, the way they were able to manhandle teams. I mean, these potent offensive football teams in, you know, Puno, Mililani, uh, they were able to stay stout and strong and able to defend their title back in Laie. Second down in about five here for McCoy Stevens. Stevens, handoff, Ryan Tuiasolo is just checked back in. Bouncing outside is Ryan, and Tuiasolo will get the first down. That may shut the door here. These chances of uh, trying to make this comeback, but a heck of an effort by both of these teams as Tuya still will get the first down. And I'm going to throw the question back at you, Felipe. What was your memorable, or you know, the, your special moment? Uh, what are you going to take out of this season? I'm going to take back. I'm going to take out of it the, uh, the the year of the quote unquote underdogs, I guess you could say. You know, the Nanakulis of the world, Lahaina Luna's, and uh, sort of every year there's always usually that one team that. Um, they really become the darlings of the season. I think last year would be Campbell, and Campbell with that very, very proud community, nearly 3,000 students, and what they've done, that resurgence of football. Same thing happened with, Nan with Nanakuli here in the white division, as here's a toss to Jacob Kukahiko, who take it to the 46-yard line. I'll make it the 49-yard line, I beg your pardon, with 53 seconds to go. Again, there's so many great stories like Lahaina Luna and, and, and Nanakuli. And Kaiser, of course, led by head coach Rich Miano. He's really going to miss this football season, but again, we got a whole lot of sports coming your way. And for all the coverage, you can log on to scoringlive.com. Fifty-three seconds here to go. Got a lot of post-game interviews coming up. A lot of good things. Uh, it, it's been a special night here tonight. I enjoyed, you know, working with you. Uh, yeah. Good, some good closure here tonight for yeah. the, the season, and 
You know, what a way to go. You know, the great thing about this game is, like, not, you know, it, it was a pretty packed house heading in, and uh, virtually no one's really left. I mean, they're supporting their, their team, uh, their family members, a lot of family here tonight, uh, watching uh, some of their sons, you know, play their last game, cousins, and uh, it's been a special night, special atmosphere, good football game that we got to see, a lot of talent out here. We're going to miss them you know, out. next year as well. 53 seconds here to go. No timeouts to the East. Stevens on the handoff. Maybe a dog pile right at the 50-yard line. Bring up third down. As with at that time was Paul Andrew Roden. And Isaiah Tavai, Barrington Governor, makes a stop. Third and long. The play clock will not start yet. With 30 seconds here to go, now we'll start. It's about a six-second differential between the play and the game clock. We're going to have to put yeah. one more play on the ground. Yeah. Really, this game is uh, pretty much over with uh, East having no timeouts. You see what David Stant uh, has here on essentially the final play of the game. Stevens with time. Chase from behind. And down he goes at the 40. And that'll be the final play. And that'll do it. Final score, West win it. 21 to 20. And what a game we saw here tonight. A lot of defense. Good skill position players playing the football game here tonight. A great battle. We got to watch a good football game. We're going to miss you seniors out there. Um, congratulations on a job well done. And then also best of luck in your future endeavors, not only as athletes, but of course student athletes as well. So we're going to miss you guys and uh, have a Merry Christmas to all of you out there as well. We're going to take a timeout. Stick around, though. We have our uh, postgame show coming up here. Final score, West win it 21 to 20. Coming back with more. This is the 22nd annual Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl right here at scoringlive.com. Back here at Kunuya K Stadium here in the campus of Kamehameha Kapalama, Felipe Ohastro, Mark Veneri, our great scoringlive.com crew. And what a game we saw here in the 2012 Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl as the West win it 21 to 20. And as we mentioned all night long, Mark, it was a phenomenal night of football. And we got to give all the credit out to these 100 guys and coaches out on this field for a great game. Yeah, way to way to go out uh, for these players out here. And like I mentioned uh, in the broadcast, not only these guys uh, athletes out here tonight, but they're student athletes. They're going to go on to play college football. Some of them at the Division One, Two, Three level, but they need to more importantly know that they're first now student athletes. They're always student athletes, but nonetheless, a great football game here tonight. We saw some defense. We saw some trickeration from both squads. Great football game. Great athletes out here tonight. And like we both said, we're going to miss these seniors out here tonight. Yeah, without a doubt. We saw pretty much every type of touchdown you could really believe in. Uh, you had Abraham Silva's 80-yard run, and you had the hook in the lateral, uh, courtesy of uh, DeCorey Briscoe. A lot of different plays that each of these coaches try to slip in there. But uh, ultimately, the West come out on top as they win it again like they did last year, 46 to 14. So the West win it by one, 21 to 20. And uh, we'll take one more time out. We'll get to all the highlights. We'll get to some post-game interviews. That's coming up Nick, next. Hang tight. You're watching the 2012 Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl right here on ScoringLive.com. All right, back here at Kanuya K Stadium here in the campus of Kamehameha Kapalama. Felipe Ohasco, Mark Veneri, and our Scoring Live player of the game, Kennedy Tui Masayali, who is pushing me out of the frame right now. He's, but pushing, that, he's pushing me out of the know, frame. You yeah. might have to move down a little bit. There you go. Kennedy. <laughs> Congratulations, Kennedy. What was it like in your final game here in this uniform as a senior? Well, very fun, exciting just to play with um, all these other players from other teams. Uh, hell of a game, yeah. How excited are you after you're making your verbal commitment to the University of Hawaii? How excited are you now to take your talents to the next level? Uh, very excited um, just so I can go over there and experience the, um, uh, was at the next level, yeah. What has this atmosphere been like between you and the players? I mean, it's all of your final games, essentially, as high school athletes. What has this week been like for you leading up to tonight? Um, very awesome. That's, that's about it. It's just like the bonding just got stronger with us, with me and the other players. Just incredible. Well, what are you going to miss, Kennedy? I know you're going to be looking over my shoulder here, but what are you going to be missing? You know, especially the Wine Sea Riders and that faithful out in Wine What are you going to miss about high school football 
as you, you're still going to get a chance to play at a Law Stadium, yeah. but what are you going to miss uh, in your brothers at Why Not? Um, I'm just going to miss playing with um, all my football boys and the buddies I've been playing for the last four years, but uh, I'll get used to it. <laughs> and now, you know, going into University of Hawaii, have you, now that you uh, got it over with, essentially, you making that commitment to Norm Chow and the gang over there and playing in the Mountain West, now what does Kennedy Tui Masai need to do to improve as a football player and uh, essentially make that next step to the Division One level? Um, what I'm doing right now is just keeping everything up above average and um, doing my best, just working harder and harder every day. Well, we appreciate you, Kennedy. Felipe, any you know final thoughts? Well, I just want to say, yeah, we had a lot of fun, and certainly the entire state <laughs> you know, had fun watching you on the field. Congratulations. Our scoring live.com, player of the game, Kennedy Tui Maseli. Right on. Yes. Congratulations. Thanks, Kennedy. We'll take one more time out. We'll wrap things up here from Kamehameha. It's coming up next. You're watching the Hub Goodwill Senior Bowl right here on ScoringLive.com. Kennedy to Masai Lee, everybody. Let's get to the highlights here on a phenomenal night for football. Let's kick it off. First quarter highlights here, courtesy of ScoringLive.com. Let's go to Keone Pacheno for the West on a 30 Two-yard pass to McCoy Kamanse Stevens. McCoy Kamanse Stevens, uh, a little bit of trickeration, as you said, Mark, earlier in the game. Richard Parham on the fumble recovery coming up here of uh, Keone Paseno, who lost it. This West defense uh, set the tone early here, but when it came time for scoring, it would be the East side that would strike first. As we mentioned, Parham, the transfer out of Texas, going to Moana Lua, his final game here as a senior. But again, as we mentioned, the senior, Abraham Silva, all season long, 94-yard touchdown. Run. And I like saying this always, almost Silva, one of the big backs in the state of Hawaii, to the house, Barrington Governors. That would break the scoring seal, 6-0. Here's McCoy Kamansi Stevens. Here's a 10-yard pass to Ali Padrina. And then the lateral near side to DeCorey Briscoe, 65 yards. It was like Will Cravens to Kave Johnson out there. 20. 10 to the house. Look at that angle right there. DeCorey Briscoe using that quick speed. And then Morikawa here for the West as we move into the third quarter. It'll be 7-6 at the half. Morikawa on a six-yard run would extend that lead. It would make it 14-6 at this point. But once Morikawa scored, it unloaded the weapons here. Tao Mua on a double pass throwing deep to Keone Tom Millar the quarterback the running back the do everything player for Pac-5 able to take it all the way 85 yards for the touchdown we head to the fourth and it is Jerry Morikawa yet again this one a three yard pass to the back of the end zone for the Lelehu receiver Keone Paseno who was essentially just wide wide open back there and then Reese Foy would hook up with Tanner Nishioka a three yard catch and that would be uh, it here for the west side as the West would win it 21-20. The East would try to fight back through all of it. Could not do it. Had some open opportunities. But again, it's not about the wins. It's not about the losses. It's about family. It's about Ohana. It's about camaraderie. As you can see on the field here, you'll see hundreds of people supporting uh, their sons uh, on the field here tonight. And just like Kenny Tumeseli said, it's the, it's the brotherhood, the bondage that, that you, you've made uh, throughout your high school careers. You, you make that with your players. You're going to be friends for the rest of your life and and this is another thing out here the camaraderie like you said both the east and the west squad getting together and this is something that they're going to miss for the rest of their lives uh, playing high school football here in hawaii and uh, i'm sure we're going to see a lot of these athletes going on to play college football and it's going to be a privilege and an honor to watch them go through their careers well certainly it was a privilege and honor to work with you mark Maneri. Oh, thank you sir it was appreciate awesome it. appreciate it uh, special thanks going out to again uh, everybody at the Hawaii Union Builders organization, thank you so much for allowing us to put this game on scoringlive.com. And thank you for all that you do with Hawaii High School Athletics. Special thanks going out to Georges Gilbert as well, the terrific staff here at Kamehameha. And, of course, our great Scoring Live crew led by our director, Brian Ng. Nobody's better than Brian. Nobody does it better than Brian Ng. So, for Mark Veneri and the terrific <laughs> women and men of our Scoring Live crew, Felipe Ojastro, final score, West win it 21-20. to Good night from Kapalama. For all the latest news, stories, and videos, make sure you log on to scoringlive.com. From Kapalama, aloha, everyone. <laughs>